welcome, welcome to Collider Live. It is Tuesday. We are back from a lovely Veterans Weekend. We missed you guys. Disney Plus just released Darkwing Duck and Gargoyles and Hannah Montana. I'm kidding. We're what? talking about The Mandalorian as well. But to join me in doing this, Mr. Hector Navarro is here. Thank you. Gracias, gracias. Mr. Coy. Jandrew's here. How do you say your last <laughs> name? Jandrew. Uh, Jandrew or Jandrew? John, say it properly. It's Jandrew. Jandrew. It's, it's, it's like J-O-N-D-R-O. -O. Okay, Jandrew. Oh, I'm very, not French, so very I sexy. say Jandrew. Jandrew. Yeah, Mark Riley, Hello. producer extraordinaire. Love this crew here today. Cody Hall, Alex in the booth, and then Kim Napsoff. What are you doing here? How's it going there? Is this the Mandalorian review for Jedi Council? No. Uh, no. I've made a huge mistake. This is the wrong show. I'm sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. We'll see you. We'll see, see you. See you, see you they, Thursday, they Ken. Right Thanks. Um, well, I was wondering. I was wondering. <laughs> the extra chair was confusing. That was, that was good. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, the Ken spotted in the wild. I'm always happy to see him. I love that. You can catch his Mandalorian review later on. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing? Thanks for being here. So, so excited. So, so excited. excited to have you. <laughs> very mm -hmm. underslept, very excited. Yes. Disney Plus morning is a rough morning. That's, that's on you. That's your <laughs> fault. I, I made life choices. That's your I fault. stand by them, mm -hmm. but man, am I hurting. <laughs> Did you guys have problems with the, the app? No. I couldn't find I it for a while. All, all, all morning. You did? You mm. couldn't log in? Couldn't log in. It wouldn't work. It was it was spinning. I tried online. <laughs> then it, did it, it on my the PS4. Yeah, well, it, it had Pluto in space with Mickey in space saying technical mm. difficulties. And I was like, mm-hmm. That's that was, about right. Oh, okay. This morning? That I think was this it's morning. probably because of the volume of... Mm -hmm. I imagine yeah, so. Uh, yeah. I told you, it, everybody was trying to watch Hannah Montana. That's what happened. Dark times. So. No, I had a great just, midnight to 4 a.m.-ish run. I had a great life choice. What did you watch, man? Uh, so I started with The World According to Jeff Goldblum, yeah. and then I looped right into The Mandalorian, yep. and then I went to uh, what a whiplash select... Of a I mean, a light, content. it was bold. Yeah. Uh, and then I watched some of the documentary about where Marvel's going, expanding the yeah, universe. Cool. Uh, and then I went into uh, key episodes of the Spider-Man animated series and mm. X-Men animated series. And then I started watching the Endgame commentary and realized, hey, wait, the sun's going to rise soon and I have to go to So collider. how are you still the Energizer Bunny <laughs> you got, with no sleep? This is the it's lowest, very impressive, This is the lowest energy I've ever seen Koi <laughs> in my life. This is three hours Koi needs a nap. Yeah. Uh, I could use, and I'm doing five shows today. I'm, yep. I, I just did Movie Talk. I'm going from this Come into on, Heroes man. and then I've got Giant Size and then we've got like a screening tonight. I've actually got, I've got to go are another you going to the screening tonight? The screening oh, tonight. yeah. You, you, whoever uh, is going to Knives Out today, uh, Collider is actually uh, holding a screening today with a uh, Q&A uh, with Ryan Johnson. So I'm very excited about that because yeah. I've been dying to watch that movie. I can't, wow. I've already seen it, but Ryan Johnson, I can't not go oh to well, say uh, hi Ryan to Ryan Johnson, Johnson for me. Say hi to him for I, me. I'll say, like, Hector, Hector Mars says <laughs> hi and thank you. Yeah. And, and here he is. Like, Hector, Hector hates <laughs> The Last Jedi. That's why <laughs> no, you no, don't no. tell him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brick and Looper. Are we already Ryan going there? Johnson. Are we already going there? Director of Breaking Bad, Ryan Johnson. Early. Yeah. No, tell him I loved it. <laughs> I'm very excited. Oh my god. But anyways, I'm very happy that you guys are joining us. That is an excellent shirt, Koi. Uh, Emperor's New Gear was Groove is one of the most underrated so Disney movies on. ever. Along with Hunchback mm -hmm. of Notre Dame. I would say Kronk is the ultimate Disney yes, prince. Yes, he's I the best. I would say like, winner agree. and champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he speaks squirrel. Yeah, you know? it's very important. Like, he's like a Disney princess and then he speaks to animals, but he's a Disney prince and that he's a little denser than he should be. Exactly. It's the perfect Completely middle ground. Agree. So we all saw The Mandalorian, right? Mm hmm. Mm. Well, yes. hang on. Technical difficulties. Yes, I know. Okay. It finally came back. Okay, yeah, great, So great. about 7 o'clock it, it came on and I went, okay, now I can sit and okay. drink some coffee. It only took you hours to get It took hours. There. It took hours. <laughs> Did I tried it really last though? Yeah. Well, last night at about 11, it, it, it started coming on. And I had technical difficulties. Went to bed, just said, yeah, it'll be fine in the morning. Right. Still had it for about an hour. I was up at like 5.45 trying to work at 7 o'clock and came on. Oh, so look at that. Go. Look well, at that. I, technology is sweet. Yeah, I'm sure Disney's like, oh, crap. I guess we have this new thing that's called technology that they have to deal with that they haven't de they dealt with before. Known. They must have Of course have they known. did. They, to they know. can't. Like, this is unprecedented volume, though. Like, exactly. Netflix went from a DVD mailing service, mm -hmm. and then they slow built up to what they are today. This is actually going better than I expected. Yeah. I, I, I thought I, no yeah. one would be able to watch for 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, mean, I actually kind wasn't. Of. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's you know, kind, kind of what of you did. What happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, you know, and I figured it was, but I, and a lot of people online, of course, I was like, to Twitter, let's find this out. Yeah. And there was a lot of people like, you should have launched it earlier uh -huh. so we could have gone through this. And I was like, yeah, I agree with that. The app should have we been available to We like, should have had the app like at least a week ago. I, I agree mm -hmm. with that. 
And then people were like, here's here's my screenshot of what I'm watching on Disney Plus. And it was that circle. Right. And mm-hmm. I saw a number of that. And I'm like, yeah, that's right, too. I'm angry. I this mean, is happening. I'm and then pissed it, I can't get my gargoyles. I would be pissed, too. And then it, yeah, then it just started working. So look at that. <laughs> I'm so, I'm patience, so patience Mark, is what you. Have. Speaking patience. of patience, yeah. Really quick before we start talking about nerd stuff. Okay. Um, how was your weekend at your grandma's house? Well, stuff happened. Didn't stuff it? happened. Yeah. yeah. I don't I'm know so if you guys are aware. It. Okay. So um, that was the last weekend at my childhood home. Yeah. So we sold it. Uh, we, me, I had no plans. You in didn't this. do shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was the last weekend for me, so I got to do you know hang out, uh, take some uh, photos for my wedding, you know, with my fiance, which That's was really awesome. nice. Because now we get to keep them forever. They turned out great. But uh, my mom, as, as she's known, um, has been haunting the house. So <laughs> uh, so this time, huh? we were in the, pia- uh, the piano room. I'm so, sorry, what? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you so, believe in ghosts? Edgar? No, but I'll hear this story with so, open ears. Uh, there's, been, there's been certain things that have happened. Like the last time I was there, we have a back porch. And uh, it, you can't access that. And, Except from the house, right? Mm-hmm. So I went out there, uh, was throwing some some trash away, coming back in, and we were all walking around doing this, this, and that. And then all of a sudden, the doorbell rang, and we're like, <laughs> "Exactly, Josh McCook is somewhere is yeah. looking around." <laughs> so that was weird. Um, I also heard, uh, you know, footsteps uh, in the wow. uh, in the bedroom, in her bedroom, while I was downstairs. Court and looks skeptical. And everybody was nobody gone. was there. Do you and not nobody was there. there. Now, is it a creaky house? Is it an older house? It's, a, it's an old house. Okay, okay. So you can you can basically go. Well, that must be the wind, or that must be sure. something. But when you hear actual footsteps, right. And the dog wow. goes, "What the fuck?" You know, and looks up. I'm like, "Okay, hi, mama." So that was kind of what happened. Right, right. Uh, there was a, there was a night that I was there a few months ago where. We heard the door kind of go um, into the bedroom wow. and the dog again. The dog always knows. You got to trust the dog. The yeah. dog went, what the fuck is going on? Bark, bark, yeah. bark. I was like, yeah, something's going on. Uh, my fiance woke me up at about 3 o'clock in the morning. She heard pots and pans all hitting no the ground way. in the Same. kitchen. Look at how, ha- look at how happy the is. Just saying. This is, yeah, my perspective. Is jam. I believe in – I've experienced things that I can't explain, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm a person that likes facts, so it's tricky mm-hmm. because – like wow. so the, the analytical face is me trying to think of the options of what could be right. the linear path while also accepting I've experienced things I can't explain. So I'm a person that needs proof. I'm very science-based, but I'm also like I can't explain some right. shit. I, I have a question about my mom if I can ask. Please. Because yeah. the, the reason I up to this point – don't believe in ghosts or spirits or the afterlife is actually a story that my dad told me when mm-hmm. I was little. My dad told me that when he was a kid, his grandma lived with him mm-hmm. and that his grandma came to him and said, hey, when I die, I'm going to come back when you're asleep and I'm going to pull on your little toes so that you know I'm OK, <laughs> which is a really creepy but also very sweet sentiment to be like, I want, I, you know, I don't want you to like, you'll know that I'm OK. I'm somewhere. So I'm yeah. going to pull on yeah, your yeah. little piggies. I'm going to pull on your little toes. Oh, God, and, I'm and, getting chills now. And, yeah. <laughs> Nothing ever happened. I'm going to start oh, pulling on. Right. The moral of that story is my dad is a non-believer because he goes, well, if ghosts were real, like my grandma, she told me explicitly that she was going to come and mm. sort of visit me. And she didn't. So he's like, so I don't believe. So he told me that story. And I think that that's a great story. You can kind of interpret it however you want. So I wanted to ask about mom, mom. Was there ever any point, was she ever like, hey, I'm going to come back. I'm going to – no discussion, nah, no conversation, no discussion. anything about the afterlife, anything about what happens next? No. Um, Interesting. We lost both my grandparents in, in the home. They sure. both they both passed in the home. Not and at the so, same time. Not at the same okay. time. Right. Uh, my grandfather passed uh, probably 12 years ago, mm-hmm. um, and uh, my uncle saw him. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, he walked by at one point, and he wow. saw it, and he had, you know – you know uh, the, the the goosebumps all up and right, down right. and um Whoa. and the uh, the nurse at the time that was taking care like got down on her knees and started praying because she saw something too wow. and it really you know freaked her out um and they lived in the house for they lived their, in the house since life? 1955 Whoa! see i think they just want that. she just wants you yeah. guys to get out of her house <laughs> it, it, it might be so <laughs> now this weekend it's the next person's problem exactly. yeah. this weekend was where something actually moved so no um way. we didn't see it move but so we went to there's and it great, wasn't leia it was not Leia. It was not your dog. There was a there is a front room where there's a piano, and uh, we went and I I play the piano every once in a while. So I'm playing. Some of my friends are over. Some family is over, and and we're all having some fun. And then I look up and I go, "Why is that chair moved?" No. I said, "Why is that chair moved? Is that was that like that?" And I look to my fiance. I look to my sister, and we all go, 
I don't know. Maybe I guess the chair. Wait, maybe, somebody must have pulled it out. And I go, okay, so I moved the chair back. No. And I go, you know what? Just Mark. for shits and, biggles, shits, shits and giggles, can't speak today. Took a picture of it. We go about our business. The next day, we come back in, and the chair had moved back. No and, and, and I went, and so Julie came and got me, my fiance, and said, "Did you move the chair?" Right. And I said, "No, I didn't. Why?" And she went, "Well, it's back in that place." And so then my sister comes in on it, and she goes, "Well, that's not Mama. Mama likes everything in its place." She's like, "That must be Frank, because Frank likes to watch people play the piano." And so the oh, the chair had Frank? moved. Yeah. <laughs> That's my grandfather, Frank. So, fuck you, Frank. Fuck you, Frank. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was kind of That's like a weird cool. thing. I decided to leave it because I get, well, obviously somebody wants it in this yeah. position. Exactly. No, he so, sent. He, he actually sent me photos yesterday morning, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I was so mad I wasn't there because I was going to actually come visit. I know. But I, know. I had yeah. to work. Life, so. life Stupid happens. Work. So. Stupid so work. So I I uh, used to like urban exploring. Uh, call it what you will. Um, Breaking into people's I, houses. I, I, not what with, is not that? their homes. <laughs> is that what you call no, it? not their homes. Uh, I used to like breaking into <laughs> asylums, uh, like in New sure. England. So there, there was a as one does. Oh. What you there, seem more like you should break out of asylum. No, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> clearly <laughs> I got here somehow, didn't I? Uh, no, but the, there's like the Northampton Lunatic Asylum that was near where I'm from, yeah. and there's also like a lot of the old New England asylums that were still up when I was growing up. They've turned them down since. But I was at one once, and you have to. The way you break in is going through the area that was where they stored the bodies, like where the trays of bodies were. Oh, okay. um, so, out. like, here we go. I'm out. Yeah, so there's only is... like one window to get into this area, and it's pitch black because it's literally a sealed area. Uh-huh. And they have all underground tunnels connecting like 86 buildings. They have to go in these underground oh. tunnels with like fences in between. No. Uh, and they actually they filmed uh, session nine at one of the asylums oh, I broke into, shit. Uh, and it, it, that's the, so that's the vibe. But I remember we we filmed it. It was a camera here and like flashlight here, and at one point something ran down the length of my light beam so like there's literally no way for that to occur like you would have to see the object that's how light works to block the yeah so so i remember that moment uh and i had i had just said like do you guys feel that and then it happens yeah so i like forever have always been like well i don't i've never seen proof but i've felt something that i can't Mm -hmm. explain uh and then we went back another time and we went up to the top floor heat rises and all of our breath got so cold we could see it and we all couldn't really like understand like in the exercise and like i was i mean i was like 22 i was old enough to like rationalize some things so ever since then i like i want proof but i have to Except there are things I can't. But you don't have proof that it doesn't exist. <sighs> so that's I'm just how like, I feel. No, right? that's, does. that's where I'm going because I've 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 spoken these stories before on here, and I do get the occasional like, "Come on, sure, come on," but and dude. I'm like, "Yeah, I can't explain it. I just yeah. can't." Yeah. yeah, you can't explain why you exist. That's my point. None of us we we're, we can you know we can look at science and Let's science get is awesome. Into it, Let's get into but, it, Dorina. Let's get into it. But we can't explain why we're here. <laughs> Nobody can explain. Like our consciousness is the one thing that science can't really explain. Right. Okay. Like you guys, like the fact that we all exist, like whether we're, whether or not we exist, whether it's a simulation, we don't know. I'm just saying. And if, if we're if matter, it's a simulation. Did you say a whatever. simulation? Yeah, I we love don't, this. Just saying. Because if it is a simulation, it would make sense. There's glitches in a simulation. If it's something that's being designed, or if quantum theory is as tangible as we think, it's very op- it's very possible that other realities can conflict with ours. So exactly. ghosts might just be realities wherein that person is still alive or isn't alive at a different time, yeah. and that that there's like that crossover. And like Dude, that's why. What? Sh- right. Exactly. That's why Schnepp is in another dimension. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so That's it's how I sh- like Schnapp's right here while mm-hmm. not being here on our exactly. plane. And I love the idea of quantum theory extrapolating to the point where every decision we make is affecting other realities' thought processes. Exactly. Like mm-hmm. it's it's all optional. Like that episode of Community with yeah. the different timelines. I love that episode. Like when Troy shows up at the end and everything is on fire, mm-hmm. uh, because that's it's 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 such a good way of explaining. Okay, there's all of these different realities that we all live in, and we could be living in all of them at the same time. We don't know that. And right. I think as AI develops, we're going to see more and more connectivity. I think we're going to be able to, to observe things we can't yet. Right. Like, like if you're you're sitting in a room, like, who knows what's in this room that we don't have the actual capacity to see? Cody People, does because he's like he the guy in Saw. But, like, like, uh, <laughs> like right now, we, we have the senses we have, but animals like dogs can see things we yeah, can't. Right. There are probably things in the world we can't right. observe. We don't have the technology. But once AI gets to the point that's, that's coming, it will be able to observe things we can't. And if that communication isn't a violent one, we'll be able to understand the world in a new and better way. I'm not pro AI, which it sounds like, but kind. Uh, no, I'm really, I'm really <laughs> but curious. But maybe we could be AI but ourselves. Maybe so. as cyborgs develop, it'll be better. Uh, so I'm really curious as if in our lifetime we'll get to the point where we can see things that will be new to history. Oh yeah, I think so. Just because of how 
rapidly technology has been evolving, especially considering like I'm a child of the 80s mm -hmm. and we didn't have Internet. So just seeing how much the world has changed that way yeah. in the last 20 years, let alone like the last five years, it's, fuck, it's terrifying. But yeah. it's also very exciting to see what we're going to yeah. get in like 10 years from now. So I think we're all replicants. <laughs> but I love the idea that somebody tune in. They're like, OK, cool. I want to hear him talk about the Mandalorian. And then they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're hitting a little nonsense right here. If I'm looking at this outline correctly, that's yeah. We're that's why we're actually following Mark's notes. We're right in for time. once. We're yeah. being, we got to wait. Thank we gotta, you, we've producer. Been, we, we've been doing that. Uh, we got to do lately. a little nonsense for thirty minutes. All right. Oh, okay. we got nonsense. Okay. Okay. Keep okay. So, going. And Ghosts. also, so when you take <laughs> LSD or mushrooms and you access right. other now planes we're talking. Of reality, now we're talking. That Keep going. I think could be something we what? can see without adulterants. Okay, I'm gonna get Joe Rogan here. But what if <laughs> drugs <laughs> that come from the Earth, like yeah. actual Earth, help us access other? What if that's the way that like aliens are communicating with us? <laughs> You All right. did okay. go full Joe Rogan. You, you lost me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. As I, as I was saying it, I was laughing. There's got to be some but you dumb aliens. <laughs> yeah, like, they want us really right like... here. They could just say be here. Yeah. What if aliens came back like millions of years ago mm -hmm. and planted these things? Is that what you're talking That's about? What I'm okay, it's so possible. That, so they are the ones that like planted these mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. um, so that the, they would become native plants, like you know, years yeah. later for the you know the dumb humans to stumble exactly. upon. Exactly. And then which you know, we have. And all the aliens are watching us from above going, look at these motherfuckers. What? Yeah. What? That's what I would do if Smoke I was an alien. I'd be yeah. like, look, look at these idiots. What if mushrooms are not only the thing that evolved us from ape to human, because we accelerated through evolution faster yeah, than go. anyone oh. should have. So what if mushrooms are the thing that aliens allowed that to do? Like, they, they gave us mushrooms to accelerate so our process. So you're saying we have and to keep taking mushrooms to become mutants from the X-Men. What I'm saying is if we keep taking mushrooms, that is how we might be able to access further intelligence, because oh. we see things at a different level. So it doesn't, like, last a permanent mutation, but if you take enough mushrooms, you see things differently. So what if that was not only the catalyst, but is a way to further our own evolution? Wait, Whoa. I want to know what Cody thinks. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I am so confused right now. Yeah, I was just about to say, it was my understanding there would be no math. Uh, I'm, 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 um, well, the thing is that, you know, Coy didn't sleep, so we, we don't sleep. Yeah. This is what happens. This is yeah. how it's going to be today, guys. This is a natural high. <laughs> yeah, this is just, this is all it's, natural. Guys, we're talking about Disney Plus, but Disney Plus what? Yeah, oh, what? Exactly. What? Okay. Someone in the live exactly, chat exactly. said Red Bull takes Koi for energy, <laughs> and I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. That's I know. Good. You did, did you drink your Red Bull or Rockstar this morning? I have not even had coffee yet. Oh, uh, I didn't have time between shows. This is me. Uh, I've had yeah. water and a bowl of grape nuts. Again, okay. lowest energy Koi I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Hector seen me full tilt. Practically sedated at yeah. this point. I'm lethargic, <laughs> y'all. Yeah. It's yeah. dark. Yeah, it's Disney yeah. plus mushrooms equals uh -huh. advancement. <laughs> <laughs> we need a. We Speaking of which, Spider Man with some little. That'll be. I was going to say, speaking of all these cartoons, we'll talk about The Mandalorian, you guys. Everybody's like, yeah. you guys, why haven't you talked about The Mandalorian? Yeah, there it is. But, um, no, not nonsense. yet. Other than The Mandalorian, what have you been most excited to see on Disney plus? <laughs> I immediately put gargoyles in yes. my yes. watch list because it's been a hot minute. I also put. Um, uh, the Three Caballeros, mm. which oh. I don't know if people know this. God, that was not the movie, not the movie. Mark, there's a new cartoon show. What? That what? Disney produced. Uh, Eric Bowser is one of the voices on it. There's a new cartoon show <gasps> with Donald wow. with the Three Caballeros. Yeah. That they have been releasing on like a Disney app internationally the past couple of years. What? And like, for, and they're all there, Pancho Pistolas, like all, the, yeah, all those they're, guys. Yeah, they're all there. Uh, well, I haven't seen. It's like thirteen episodes, and it's like the three caballeros going on some kind of adventure, and yeah. it's modern animation, new voices. It's all new, but for years now, since that has been kind of secretly announced, people in the United States have been like animation fans have been like, why can't we get it? And eventually, at some point, they were like, oh, it'll be on Disney Plus. Okay. So that was the first thing. I've, I'm like, cool. Now I have access to it in this right. territory. Previously yeah. could not access it. But I saw pe some people on the internet, some international fans were like, oh, yeah, I got it. It's great. It's a great kid show. It's awesome. So I put that in my queue. I put um, – what else did I put? I put – because I recently watched for my buddy over at uh, Screen Junkies, Billy Business. Mm -hmm. I you watched know, the – well, you know Billy Business. Yeah. I watched um, the three Mighty Ducks movies. Yeah, oh, yeah. I watched them all, and I was like, oh, Quack. these – I don't like them. Uh, oh. But Quack. they're – but Quack. at the same Quack. time – at the same time – 
my kid brain does love them. So it's this interesting. I'm like yeah. watching it. I'm like, this is amazing. And also my adult brain is like, this is a dumb movie. That, this yeah. is so bad. But it's you know so that. But that, that, happens with a lot. Yeah. Puck. that happens with a lot of movies. It does. So because I, I watch like if you watch something like Never Ending Story, I still think it holds up. Sure, sure, sure. But, uh, but there's but movies like, like right. exactly. Or like Labyrinth. Sure. Uh, it's great soundtrack, but yeah. it's also kind of ridiculous. And also I'm such a huge fan of my favorite. It's, it was like a little mini genre in the 90s, which was the inspirational kids playing sports movies. They oh, just yeah. brought back the Bad News Bears for the 90s. Yeah, like think, Little Giants. I love it. Great but movie. I, I think the best one is The Sandlot. I think The yeah, Sandlot yeah. is genuinely for an sure. amazing film. Mm -hmm. So everything else I'm kind of comparing to that. So I watched the Mighty Ducks movies. I had fun. But in the 90s, I don't know if y'all remember, they made a spinoff animated yeah. anthropomorphic duck crime fighting were... show called Mighty Ducks. Oh, yeah. Yes. I series. do remember that. I put that in my queue immediately. Inexplicably played hot. <laughs> Was it <still>. good? <laughs> Ian Ziering. Brad Garrett, wow. some other voice actors. I remember loving it, and it was only like one season. So I'm okay. gonna rewatch the hell out of it. I'll That's let you know. Okay. I'll let you know. Yeah, That's what I'm enjoying most is the things that I would never intentionally seek right. out. Oh, yeah. And you're like, That's right. And it's uh, like I, I tweeted and Instagrammed about it because I, I couldn't handle my nostalgia. Uh, I was watching the Spider-Man animated series the theme, 90s just one. the theme last mm -hmm. yeah, yeah last night. Yeah. And, and it was like Man. one in the morning, and just hearing that like mm -hmm. first riff, mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. that web come mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Morbius swipe the webbing. Like, there's just so much that it brings you not just oh back to Spider-Man. It brings you back to being six or, or yes. eight or however old you were. I was older, but yeah. I, like, I yeah. And I used to VHS tape them and then mm -hmm. stop for commercials and then quickly record oh, yeah. again. And I broke so many VCRs Same. just with that show. And then you bought the clam box for like $27 at Suncoast Video and it had that, that plastic Suncoast. smell. Oh, mm, with and, like three episodes on yeah, it. Yeah, and then it was just bullshit. It was right. 45 I, minutes. You're like, you can fit more on this tape. I know you can. I know. It was so dumb of them. Why did they do Exactly. Right. Well, it was but actually smart of them and dumb, on, dumb of us. We were the which dumb is, ones because we gave them our exactly. $27 for three episodes. What's, but mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. we can just watch it all. And I think nostalgia is – I think a nostalgia is a piece of the times right now because we're like escapism so strong but we're overwhelmed with content. So it's a great safety net of like yeah. we know this content mm -hmm. and it reminds us what it was like when times were simpler to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, and that's uh, – it's interesting because we were just talking about that yesterday. Um uh, I forget who I was. I probably Haley Fouch because you know she's my fellow witch. Yeah. But um, it's it's one of the things where it, it's interesting to see nostalgic things, not the not like the rehash stuff that we see nowadays, like with Stranger Things or, or mm -hmm. whatever, which is still cool. Mm -hmm. But when you watch something that you watched as a kid, yeah. like something like Batman Returns to me, like no matter what how people feel about that movie, yeah. it just is always going to make me feel good. Yeah. Like I, I if yeah. I watch them, it, it, no matter what, it just brings me back to being like. 12 right yeah. or 10 years old and be like this is this is like nothing else matters like this moment right now like this this art that i'm watching in front of me like this is what makes me happy yeah and and that's how i feel about spider-man the cartoon x-men the cartoon obviously batman mm -hmm. the animated series mm -hmm. like animaniacs right Do you guys get sensory stuff like I remember smells that I was experiencing oh, when oh, I was yeah, watching yes. it, sure. and like I remember eating certain things. Like I, I remember going to sleepovers, and like when I watched this episode, I had this for dinner, and we drank this. Like yes. it was like it's like seven wow. up or something. I was a kid, but I, I remember sandwiches. Oh, fr you cut the little edges and you fry mm -hmm. them, so good. But I, I remember that along with the episode. So it, it doesn't just give me the show back; it gives me like chunks of my life I've forgotten I know. back. Like Disney Plus is is giving me my childhood. Back. I know it's like it's like rewiring our hard drives in, yeah. inside mm -hmm. our brains and and like bringing us back to things like oh yeah that's right like I totally forgot a Mighty Ducks cartoon existed. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I haven't done any of the. I haven't you know gone around and and navigated Explored. through it yet because it was took me forever just to get the Mandalorian. But <laughs> there is a movie that I'm looking forward to revisiting that's going to be on Disney Plus. Which is what? Gentlemen, ladies, Brink. No ladies here, Mark. Goth. <laughs> The Rocketeer. Oh, yes. so good. So good. So one Wilson. of the best superhero themes ever. Yeah. Yes. I love it so much. Who did that score? I'm trying to remember. It was, was it, James Horner. Was it James Horner? It was either James Horner or Alan Silvestri. If oh, I, I think, think it's, it's Alan Silvestri. Think it's Alan Silvestri. Think it's Alan Silvestri. Think Silvestri. Yeah. Nope. 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 You, James Horner. E e oh, was right. man. Good job, Ekberg. Man, I would have thought it was Silvestri. Showdown points gone. Well, Joe Johnston. <laughs> yeah. You know? It should, yeah. yeah, James Horner. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, well, he, that's right. He was doing all that like '80s, '90s uh, family stuff. Right. So yeah. well. R.I.P. So underrated. James Horner. I know. I know. Gone too soon. Rocketeer is great. You know what else is is cool? I saw somebody. Uh, I think it's always great to re-examine the stuff you love. Mm -hmm. uh, to recognize how things have changed, mm -hmm. but still absolutely love it. You don't have to just say everything is, uh, you know, oh, that's problematic. Shut up. You love The Simpsons and you love, you of know, course, sure. all that other stuff. Yeah. But I saw somebody point out. 
the Simpsons episode with Michael Jackson is not, not on, on there. there. Yeah, I, and I was I, like, are you serious? Okay. okay. That bugs the hell me out of me. Too. Because yeah. as, the complete as, just, as a completionist, I'm like, look, I'm loving that everybody is diving back into like Simpsons. Yeah. But if you're a fan and you're mad that like that episode isn't on there, first of all, it's I'm a the, part I, of history. Yes. I'm the type of person that if you're wa- if I'm watching a show and I'm like for real committing to it, I'm gonna pull up like the Wikipedia entry on the show. Oh yeah. And sometimes I'll cross reference and be like, let me just make sure that they do have every episode. Mm-hmm. Just to double check. Okay, we got everything, season one, good to go, let's go. If you see something like that and you're mad, you know what? Go track down that season of The Simpsons on DVD. Yeah, go do it. Physical yeah. media still, with even with Disney Plus, still wins all because everyone's like, "Oh, great! I'm glad I didn't buy any movies in the MCU. Now they're on there." I'm like, "No, they're not. Mm-hmm. You well, don't have the Incredible Hulk. You don't have the nope. Spider Mans." Right. So right. love what you love, but also if you're if you're if maybe Disney Plus or whatever is is now getting you to the point where you really care strongly about stuff like this of like, "Hey, don't edit that or don't leave that episode yeah. out. Go get the physical media. You'll have it forever." I mean, I have my precious huge collection of VH. As Disney movies and not just Disney but mm-hmm. but uh, all of those things like yeah. that they actually have re-edited it nowadays sure. right like like yeah. didn't we lose like the the priest and the little mermaid had like a weird boner and like <laughs> yeah, they, and they got rid of that yeah, so there's things like that that um that people are like happy they changed I'm mm-hmm. like I don't know I think it's kind of funny that an yeah. animator was like hey th- this is this looks fun and kids aren't gonna get it so and the rescuers down under had those two window frames where it was actual live action like boobs like oh, it yeah. was like actual right. real Took life porn and that's gone now you know kids. that was from the days of you couldn't pause things right now right. it's very clear isn't the Lion King when like Simba lays down and the mm-hmm. and the dust comes the up and spells sex? sex yeah, yeah. well. well and Nala has does does have the Disney Thank sex eyes, and they got rid of oh, those yeah. too. They How don't have they those in the movies those? anymore. What no, do you but mean? when was the last time you saw oh, Disney okay. sex they're, they're eyes? At, you're right. You're right. You got, got them from Ariel, Nala, dust, but who else? That dust is actually supposed to read SFX because it was effects. done by the special effects team. But everyone's like, that's it. That maybe that's the e. urban legend then. Yeah, is that it, it was sex, but it was SFX. I still think that was edited later. You're right. But also on the Little Mermaid VHS cover, there was a penis on. Yeah, big Castle. dildo. Definitely. Yeah. Big <laughs> dildo. Big gold dildo. <laughs> Definitely that's phallic. So funny. Yeah. But also to Disney Plus's credit, there is uh, somebody else pointed out when you go watch like the Dumbo movie, mm. an old classic Disney movie, there's in the little description they have Disney put something like like this may contain inappropriate content by today's standards, something like that, which right. I'm like, good, just do exactly. that. Exactly. Warner Brothers does it for their Looney Tunes shorts. Yeah. Right. They have some shorts that they do not hide away when really they should because they're like super racist or mm. offensive or whatever but they'll put out these these collections kind of meant for adult collectors of Looney Tunes shorts and they go they have that little that, that little thing and that little warning in the beginning that says look some of this stuff is outdated but to say that it didn't happen would yeah. be ignoring Agreed. history and ignoring that things like racism and sexism occurred then so we're just going to present it as is but know that it is of its time and it's just for historical purposes Disney could so easily do that I'm not saying Disney you got to put Song of the South on there right right I know right like that's it that's a that's a whole nother conversation but they could very easily keep their legacy content forever Mm -hmm. by just having those little uh, warnings and things and disclaimers where appropriate speaking of uh, re-edited things did you guys Mm -hmm. hear that the Han Greedo scene was re-edited they can change it again (laughs) what is is wrong with them how 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 do you there's only two options who shoots first no No. this thing is like well it used to be Han shot only not first Right? Yeah. Because he's a, he's a, he, he would shoot he shot Greedo and then he dies. But now they they did a weird thing apparently where Greedo actually says something before or, or right after be, right before he gets shot. What? It's, a, it's McClunky or something, which McClunk- I don't know what that means. It's a space swear word. McClunky. McClunky. What does it mean? I don't know. Why would you oh, add wow. more? I don't to know. Oh. So what's the thinking? Yeah, but, everyone, yeah. but it's funny because I always laugh at people for getting mad at this. And when I saw it, I totally like my nerdum inside. I was just like, what the fuck? It's, it's so over and over again. It's gone poorly. Why would they make the same mistake in a new way? Like that is aggressively done. I know. It's pretty funny. Yeah, you're though. right. McClunky. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. But it's a hashtag right now. So I it's know. happening. But wow. what, what is just the nis- because it's so no. weirdly funny, he said, okay, yeah, so. No one seems to know what it means, but fans, including Patton Oswalt, are having some fun with it. Looks like the seed money that McClunky Toilet Hawks <laughs> gave should, to Disney Plus. They should earlier. rename The Mandalorian to The McClunky. That's, That's so the weird. Sequel. I just don't. Yeah. So I heard oh, there's an article Anyways. on it. I mean, I just don't get why I don't we know need. Either. Like 20 so, uh, if I, if, special edition. If I editions? read it correctly, I heard that it was like changed for the 3D 
um, that they, uh, he was going to put the three. What? Remember, remember, it was the yeah. At one and point, they we were getting, and they stopped because Phantom Menace came out, and, and it was like nobody. Like, yeah. yeah, well, that's your problem, George. Yeah, you opened with Phantom Menace <laughs> yeah. as your first three D Star Wars movie. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't the three D part. You should have put Phantom if Menace. They, if they had put a New Hope in theaters in three D when people liked three D or at least would go to check it out, it would have done great. We I went and saw Empire. Top Gun. It did well. Yeah, we would have gotten Return of Jedi, and then he could have quietly been like, "Oh, here's a prequel, also in three D," and people would have been like, "Cool, nice." While they're here, so yeah, it's changed again. Which um, that's insane. Well, they'll probably change it again in three years. So, so I <laughs> still they have a new conversation. It's yes. like a whole like. <laughs> it's like oh, how could we fuck it up again? <laughs> I haven't been on live since this happened. Can I? Can I tell? I I met Harrison Ford and he's the absolute greatest. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Everyone like I've heard so many. You know, he's he's like a cr- curmudgeonly and grump. He's the nicest guy ever. So what uh, did you say to him to make him laugh? I need to know. <laughs> So I need to know what you said to make Harrison Ford laugh. I, you said uh, Greedo shot first. I approached him, <laughs> yeah. and he was being surrounded he by lots and lots of people, obviously, because even at a premiere, it's Harrison Ford. Yes, so even yes. with all these people there, it's Harrison Ford. And I, out of nowhere, like not mid-conversation, I opened the conversation with, hey, I'm a talk show host, and I really appreciate that you don't give a fuck when you do interviews. Like, that was my open. And that's what made him laugh? And he turned around and laughed. Great. And then we started talking about journalism and scoop journalism and how much I hate how the internet has ruined journalism and, yeah. is, and is causing all of the problems we're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I, and I started talking about like the integrity of not trying to get information out of someone they don't want to give and all these things, but also how much the host needs to work. Like they need to do their research. They yes. need to know the comic. If you read a Wikipedia article at me, I'm going to have a problem. Like yes. if we're doing anything from a movie fight to a thesis paper, if you're just reciting someone else's yeah. knowledge, no. So we talked about the integrity of having actual knowledge versus reciting someone else's. Well, and, and, then, and then coming up with questions uh, w- that actually uh, relate to the ideas or the concept of like whatever it is you're talking about and mm-hmm. not just being like, how did you come up with this character? Did you exactly. Know? Yeah, yeah the, all the questions. Or like, what was your diet? I hate right. that. So so we're talking about all this. And <laughs> it's then, like, let me talk about how sad I was during my yeah, diet. Let me tell you how I <laughs> suffered for this. Yeah, exactly. So so we're talking and like it turns into like a, like a one-on-one conversation and then he starts doing the Harrison <gasps> point. So I'm seeing this and I'm like, don't freak out at the Harrison point because I'm like I'm trying to separate the moment and like so then he goes you know I've got a philosophy if there's dead air it's theirs yeah <laughs> and I was just like wow and I like want that tattooed on me like because wow. that's exactly how I feel about journalists that's it's it's great. on you to carry the conversation it's yes. on you to do the thing so Harrison going if it's dead air it's theirs and he pointed at and you and I got the point this, there, yeah. and then like I don't like taking photos with people because it makes yeah. them uncomfortable Same. but we've been talking long enough and everyone else was taking pictures of him like they were snapping photos what like, is that and I was like like, this is... like he's an animal yeah. it's Someone, so weird like it, it, like you're in a zoo and somebody's just... off air I'll tell you the creepiest thing yeah. that happened about uh, but so then we were talking oh, no. and someone had my phone over here and I was like hey I'm so sorry do you mind he's like no and he, he moved my phone over and gave it to a security and a security guard took a picture with us and then we had a couple more minutes and then it, so I have a I have a pride and joy photo of me Beautiful. and Harrison that Beautiful. all went well so I wanted to say Han shot first Han shot only Han shot only that's how it should I love, be I love yeah. that man he's a murderer I was, you're right I love that man yeah he killed without and you remorse know what? <laughs> so is Cassian and or and they're both dope yeah, true exactly true. But and, I just wanted and, to say, and you know who else kills people? Actor the Joker. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> there. Yeah. I just wanted to clear the air that Harrison true. Ford's the greatest. If you've heard any stories about him being grumpy, he was probably being harassed by a lot of awful people. I like just, I, saw. I just think that uh, anybody that's in the public eye, when you, it, it's it's probably feels really nice to them when you treat them like a human being. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Because because people don't right, right. And, and that's why you get crazy people with weird attitudes because they don't trust people because they're you know they're mm-hmm. they're yesing them all the time. But when you just treat them as a human being and be like, hey man, how's it going? And How are you? Don't say the <laughs> same stuff. Like exactly. it, it was like Matt Damon who grew up near me, so we talked about the unionizing of teachers in Massachusetts. We cool. had an actual conversation about important things. Right. Uh, Christian played Dickie, who I know like Mickey and I boxed with Mickey, so we talked about Mickey Ward and Dickie Eklund. He was like, oh, Dickie just texted me and like me and Bale talked about boxing and Lowell right. and then I worked Great. on a James Mangold film but I wasn't running it so I talked to him about doing stunts on night and day with Tom Cruise and that weirdness yeah. but I didn't like run around taking pictures of people at a premiere right. no. like I, I wasn't trying yeah. to like it's just uncomfortable don't be a paparazzi that's invited I know exactly like, it's just wrong I agree um, so uh, damn coy like I still wish I had your energy because I'm <laughs> like at, at, you're, you're this fine. tired you're like you're fine. so tired yeah. I'm so tired and like how are you like I just want like you should as an energizer bunny you should give us some it's my fear of mortality 
Because I, oh, I know you're that just I'm going like, to die. You're just YOLO, YOLO, YOLO all the time. Because like, I'm at best like a third of the That's way into my point. life, right? So right. if I only have so many minutes, i got to get as many words out as I can. i got to live as much as I can because, wow. frankly, it's almost over. Who's doing that, Alex? Are you looking? Frankly, we're almost Look, all dead. Koi. That's me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sitting anyway. next to him. The osmosis will kick in. That's yeah. the I'm, being, I'm, being yeah. held up, I'm being held up by some coffee and Febreze right <laughs> yeah. now. I'm just like, yep. <laughs> Anyways, oh, let's get to talk about nerd stuff so that uh, our nerd audience is happy with us. Yes. So we got <laughs> new Star Wars, you guys. It happened. We all saw it, right? Yeah. We, we all saw, saw it in this room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, we're not going to talk spoilers today because no. people have okay. some people have not seen it. Some people internationally, I don't even know if they have access to it, apparently. Right. But uh, we do want to see... We do want to talk about whether or not we actually enjoyed the show or not. And mm-hmm. I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, How dare you? For the most part. <laughs> How dare you use that most part stuff? Um, look, okay. I've been watching Go. Watchmen and it's such a Yo. fantastic show Same that it's really so hard. Good. It's like when I when I get obsessed with a show, it's really hard for me to watch a new show and be like, it's good. Mm-hmm. But it's not like this other one, mm-hmm. you know. And so, And look. The positives for me, it looks beautiful. The Mandalorian mm-hmm. is a beautiful looking show. Mm-hmm. The cinematography is just, it, it made me want to slobber all over my TV. Uh, but uh, the score. The score by Ludwig. Goranson. Really, really great. Mm-hmm. Yes. Really cool. That's, Thank you, Cody. That's not it. That's not Ludwig. Yeah, yeah, this no. is score. That's that not is, Ludwig. Yeah. No, that's definitely not Ludwig. Are we sure? Uh, but thank you, Cody. Okay. Um, so uh, every morning, <laughs> Koi doesn't sleep. <laughs> um, so much to do. <laughs> but anyways, so uh, the other thing I like, other than the music, is the fact that it felt like uh, kind of like a Western. Yeah. And, and that's Definitely. how that's how the original Star Wars was, uh, you know, made to be. Yeah. And so it, it was kind of cool to to see that that throwback feeling to the Star Wars universe. Some of the stuff felt a little prequelish to me, and I'm not a fan of that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when you say that prequelish, what is he? What do you the mean? The way by that? it looked and some of the okay. creatures, okay. and uh, and it's just it's just. I know this it's, that Star Wars has changed, yeah. and and it's never going to be like the original trilogy. So uh, it's weird how Star Wars has become the biggest thing ever, mm-hmm. but it still chases that like, ah, oh, it's just a bunch of guys in the desert with makeup, right. and we the lips flap don't ever match perfect. But that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. It's a puppet, yeah. you know, and you know it's a puppet, and you know it's a puppet. <laughs> but that's cool. It's charming. It's charming. It's charming. And it's like, yeah, it is. But like. Y'all could make this look better, but it's a Star Wars. It's a Star Wars. Star Wars. So it's, it's interesting <laughs> right. that they're that they're like they have all the money in the world, but they're chasing that indie feel of like this is all we got. This, I thought you know? that was interesting. The new yeah. trailer, the the episode nine trailer, the newest one. Uh-huh. There was a shot where they were like following a ship into the larger ship, and like all of the details looked like it was from the seventies, which I know was intentional. Right. But I definitely had the moment of like. Yeah. I don't know how I should feel because I get yeah. what you're doing and I acknowledge that's yes. a positive, but I also feel like I'm seeing, like, I don't know. Yeah. And I felt it's like tough. the same with Mandalorian where yeah. I really enjoyed it. I actually liked it more than a lot of, uh, oh, man, I'm going to say it. I liked it more than a lot of Star Wars content. So I had a really good time. I'm hearing a lot of that. I'm just afraid of the Whoa. internet. Star Wars fans scare me. No, no, no. The, own it. the internet, just don't say The Last Jedi and you should I'm be just going to not say you those three words. Cody, do you have a whiteboard ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to, in fact, try not to say Jedi in case it sounds like the words last or the are near it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I really enjoyed it because it felt like the original trilogy yes. more to me than a lot of things yes. have. Yep. And I really liked that Return of the Jedi makeup stuff when it, it, it worked more than a lot of the attempts I think lately have to make it old and retro Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I love the new characters and I loved how instantly endearing they are because to me Mm -hmm. Star Wars is about how monumentally impactful a two minute character is Mm -hmm. to me Star Wars is this character has three lines and it has a toy because that's how much it matters like Greedo and and Boba Fett instantly and I love that character who just walks around saying like I have spoken Yeah, that's amazing that character has five minutes of screen time and I'm like I'd buy that toy and And that's that's Star Wars and that's Nick Nolte Mm-hmm. <gasps> well, the voice—he wasn't in the. Yeah. It was like a like a smallish actor. In yeah, that, yeah, but that, it is yeah. a voice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I didn't know that. I like there it even more. Like, also, Brian Pesane's in this. Carl Weathers. I never yeah. knew I needed yeah. in Star Wars, but I totally did. Bernard had her song. Best yeah. part. I mean, he, he was the he coolest was person ever. Best yeah. part. Yeah. If you guys don't yeah. know who he is, watch all his other movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch Grizzly Man. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but uh, but generally, you got, you all liked it, right? Yes. Hector, what did you think? I liked it. I had a really good time with it. I liked the. Um, even though I had to retrain my brain, the pacing, 
I really enjoyed the pacing. I was yeah. talking to Roka about this outside. The pacing is vastly different from Star Wars that I'm mm-hmm. used to because at one point in the show, I was watching it and I'm like, am I bored, right? Am I getting a little bored? Mm-hmm. I think I am because things that happened in this pilot episode, in this first episode, would happen in 20 minutes mm-hmm. of a movie mm-hmm. because the movies just move so quickly, but it's that Western vibe. Mm-hmm. It's a new pacing. And I was like, le- like kind of letting myself settle in and be like, this is cool that we're going to, you know, that this is going to be that nice stretched out TV. TV format. I so like how I, you settle in. I just, you know, you settle it because at first I'm like, okay, here we go, Mandalorian, here we go. And the show's like, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 We're not going to go that fast. We're going to yeah. take 20 minutes to get off this first planet. Yeah. And it'll be cool, but like, hold your horses. And I'm like, okay, all right. Whew, okay, here we go. And uh, I love the ending. I thought the ending, that's the ending that, the, that made me so, so excited. But here's the other thing. I loved the Western vibe of it. Mm-hmm. I think that it nailed a lot of that stuff. But while watching the show, and I really enjoyed the show, and I cannot wait to see the rest of the season, I'm going to do the opposite of what you did, Koi. It made me like The Last Jedi even more. Mm. Because everybody... <laughs> no, lean into Man. it, Hector. Man. Lean into it, dude. Ow. I'll tell With you why. Your brother. I'll tell you why. Let's go. I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Uh, and thank you for the last episode of Collider Live. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. And I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. Uh-oh. I'll never be invited back. But I'll tell you why. Nope. nope. Um, guess, guess what? Producer likes yeah. you. You're fine. Mar- Martin Scorsese is right about every single thing he says about the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I also feel like it is unfortunate that they're the, they're no longer the underdog. Marvel is the top of the food chain. And even within Marvel and the, that genre, I think that they should get more credit for bending and breaking rules that they're playing with. They mm-hmm. absolutely have rules and limitations in their movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they themselves bend and break them to give us interesting and exciting stories. Mm. I think Star Wars has even stricter rules. Yeah. And even though there's... After this trilogy or after the prequels? From the beginning to now. Everything. Okay. Everything. I think that the prequels, one of their many sort of mistakes is that they're also adhering to those Mm -hmm. rules more so than people think that they deviate from them. I don't think that they do. I agree. I think they adhere to those rules. And I think that the rules of Star Wars are great and have led to... Continuity, consistency, storytelling, mm. and stuff that I love about comics. Mm-hmm. I, I love continuity, but it also means like you're you're here, right? And you're only going to get that. So to be able to like some Marvel movies in Phase Two, where they're bringing in Ant Man with the heist vibe, and you know other movies that are like, well, now it's this, but this vibe, where it's all still superhero movie. Winter Soldier is a political thriller. It right, is, but it's right. still a superhero movie. Star Wars should be able to do more. We have always wanted more vibes, more tones, more right. genres. Right. And I want to see so well, much and, more of that. And tonally, I think that uh, you, each trilogy actually has different tones, like, for sure. Agree. And so, and so that's kind of where I was hoping Mandalorian would would be something that's a mix of everything. Sure. But uh, but also new stuff that we haven't seen before because it's, that's yes. that's how you expand a universe yeah. by not just adding new characters, new planets, right. new whatever, but, but new but, tones and correct. new themes. Yeah. And it feels so nice to live in the same universe with new characters. Like, specifically, yes. it yeah. feels so nice to not yes. be waiting for Leia, Luke, or Han. Right. It feels agree. so nice to not be like... So, and that's what we talked about when I was on Rule of Two. Sorry to yeah, yeah. No, go, no, yeah. I agree. I think that it there's it's a strong showing for what the potentiality of the show could be. Right, mm-hmm. right. And I can't wait to see that explored. I love the new characters. And I also love that there's a lot of, like, this is post-Empire, post-Empire, post-Return of the yeah. Jedi. I like living in that little world. But... All of that said, it still felt like, especially because, you know, I watched the newest episode of Watchmen right before. Yeah. And Watchmen's breaking my brain with what it's doing with the rules of TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's a spoiler. I'm sorry. I have to do this for Watchmen. Dude, Spoilers. D- dude throws little fetuses in a lake. And I was like, are you? I'm like, how can you do this? Mm. And then I watched the first episode of The Mandalorian, and it is Star Wars. Yeah. It's cool, and it's a Western, mm-hmm. and I dig it, but it definitely is. That. So I'm like, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about Martin Scorsese's very correct observations about genre filmmaking and, and big pop culture filmmaking. So, and how safe we stay, right? So my, my takeaway was I dug it, but that's another reason I really, really, really like the Last Jedi because it still plays with those things, but to me, the Last Jedi bends or breaks yeah. as many rules as it can get away with while still feeling and being like Star Wars to me. Right, <laughs> right. and so okay. God, yes, man. really quick. Everything, yes. Really quick. Yeah. Well, I disagree <laughs> a little bit. I agree that uh, anything I said it before on the show, but anything to do with uh, Luke and Yoda and the Ray Kylo stuff, like mm-hmm. I loved all that. Mm-hmm. It's the Canto bite stuff that took me out of the but movie. Listen, but I, I, will, I can't get over that. So no, that I get stuff. it. It's yeah. corny and cheesy. 
And Star it's Wars is Star full Wars. of corny and cheesy. I would disagree. Not that way. Because That's like that was like weird Harry Potter uh, for kids or Spaceballs humor. That wasn't. Original. I I disagree. I go. You got to look at the whole thing as again adult brain. And right. there's weird, goofy, puppety, cheesy, corny stuff in all of st- in the prequels in the original trilogy. I don't care what your favorite is. I don't care what you like. I don't care what you think is serious for adult. It's all goofy, silly, silly, fun stuff for children. But what I love about that stuff, and I know why people don't like it, and it's totally fair. It is, it's weird and it's silly and it's goofy. Thematically, I think it, again, bends and breaks some rules of Star Wars. It actually brings in some, well, this is why the wars of Star Wars is happening. Yeah. And here's who's benefiting from them. And here are the this power structures. This is why the structures. wars in the stars yeah. is happening. Seriously. And, then, and you have to have... Um, the Rose character uh, explain, uh, uh, to Rose Tico explain to Finn, like, no, 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 this is how the world works. And this is, th- I want to inject some of these themes into this space adventure about uh, a, a solitary person that takes up a destiny. Like, but there's a bigger picture here. And I, DJ I is involved in that. And I just loved what those themes brought. It's I agree silly. With they that, ride but horses. I didn't like, it's, it's goofy. It's, it it's the bad. execution. Sure. Everything sure. you're saying makes sense. But again, but I didn't I, like the dialogue or the execution for all that's those That's fair. That's I forgive it all because I forgive a lot of. Corny Star right, Wars right. but I understand people's uh, mileage may vary. For yeah. me, The Mandalorian does what I think genre content does well, is it gives you a different flavor while still knowing exactly what you want out of it. Mm-hmm. When I watch a Star Wars or a Marvel movie or anything, even if it's like you're saying a different genre within the genre, which is something I've always admired these films are able to do, I think Rogue yeah. One mm-hmm. took a lot of different Same. chances, and I think, I think yeah. that's the beauty of these films, but you're also like... You know what that seventeen dollars or twelve dollars or however much movies are in your town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what that's getting you, mm-hmm. and that is both the gift and the curse of the content because it really keeps you in this this perspective for the filmmakers. But it also is reliable, and that's why they make all this money. Right. But yeah. I love with Watchmen and Mandalorian existing at the same time with with El Camino, which I <laughs> love so much. Yeah. With all of these things is. It's like going to a comic store mm-hmm. or going to a good restaurant. Right. Mm-hmm. It's either, for me, those are the two ways I see content. Yeah. The comic store is you got a spinner rack. I can either go Vertigo title. I can go, you know, Young Spider-Man title. I can go Ultimate Spider-Man or Spectacular or Amazing. Or I can go over here and read something I've never read. I can read Saga or Mr. Miracle. Right. That's all the content. Or it's like a great buffet where I can make these choices. I don't want... Mandalorian to be more like Watchmen. I just have to know when I'm switching over to make sure I let myself go. I'm having potatoes, not green beans. Right, and that's and that's you you describe it perfectly, Koi. And I think that uh, it's it's true that it's weird that I grew up reading all these superhero comic books, right, Mm -hmm. and being obsessed with with Batman, X Men, etc. But then as an adult nowadays, maybe maybe because we're so inundated with that content, I seek the indie alternative comics, right? Mm -hmm. Like I I, Brian K. Vaughn's my favorite comic book writer of all time. So every time he writes something new I want to check it out whether mm-hmm. it's Saga Private Eye like whatever uh, everything he does is amazing and so that's the type of stuff that is going to be at the priority mm-hmm. list for me totally. you know like at the top of my mm-hmm. priority list mm-hmm. and then and then if I still have cool Star Wars stuff to, to watch or cool, then that's cool right Bonus. that's kind of how I see it so that's why I wasn't seeing the Mandalorian with the eyes of like you know a super like this, uh, snobbish <laughs> critic that I was yeah. like oh well that di-. I mean this I kind of the best TV show right. ever made no it's exactly not, it's, it's just yeah. it's just meant to entertain right yeah, yeah. So, and uh, I think what it, did you think Mark I haven't even heard your thoughts uh, I mean I loved it I I think I go what really stuck out to me what you were saying Hector is is this world building in this that it took its time Love where it. you were like what and that's what really hit me with it was like so assured of itself it Love just it. went you know what here it is and it's taking its time to world build and it wasn't making any qualms about it it was mm-hmm. just like here's the mandalorian here's his first mission you know mm-hmm. you're going to see this you're going to feel the yeah. world you have you're, you're not immediately getting a crawl that's telling you where we are in the universe mm-hmm. like all the star wars right, movies right. do right so this is just boom you're dropped into the story and if you like it great if you want to hang out like and i've already seen some reaction to you know what I was expecting it to be Game of Thrones in space and it's like well that's on you I think right. yeah. because well, if you are walking in, you yeah. do have expectations and I get it and I have my own expectations and yeah. I was expecting and wanting Game of Thrones in space and what happened was it started and I went I don't know yeah. I don't I wait, wait I'm feeling weird here there's a certain character at the beginning that I was like I don't know if I like this mm. the tone right, right. I don't know if I is like it, this you were being the, like a nerd you're like oh I don't know I was yeah, being nerd yeah, Horatio because Sands character uh, I believe so yeah I yeah. think so so yeah. I really liked him but, I yeah. then I found myself I go you know what all this shit you know mm-hmm. gotta let just let the filmmaker let Dave Filoni yes. in this case do 
the job that he was meant to do. And so I just sat back and then it just washed over me. Great. And I was just launched into this world mm-hmm. where I'm not getting any answers. And I'm sitting there going, give me answers. What, where, what is happening with Return of the Jedi? And then five years later, and where, how is it going to be the First Order? And where, yeah. where's yeah. Snoke? And where's Snoke? And you're just and sweaty everywhere. Gonna be and and, and, and so, Julie's like, what are you doing? Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Julie took off before yeah. this, so I, I, I had a nice quiet moment. Um, but yeah, so it, it felt really good. And then there was moments where I perked up at certain world building mm-hmm. of the Mandalorian culture itself, Super where cool. I just went, oh, shit. And then that ending... The ending ending nailed it for me where I go, there's the through line for me that this is what the first season is going to explore. And what the Mandalorian does, he's already gray, a gray character. We don't know his loyalties. We have an idea. But I thought it was stuck the landing for me as far as here's the series we're going to uh, put out there. And that it felt like a pilot. It felt like we've had these shows before come out where you're like, huh, okay, I think I like it. I I know – and then like you hear it with like Game of Thrones. You hear it with certain – uh, you know, shows like Breaking Bad. Oh, I heard you about. gotta give it four seasons. Yeah, yeah. You're like, All right. This Six for me is my like life. Yeah. the first episode really did its job as far as setting the world, setting the characters, the feel of the universe, and then not answering a lot at all. For me, it was like it really didn't answer much of anything, right. and that's what I loved. What I really appreciate is all three of us described it as leaning – like we all had some allegory towards like leaning back and settling in. Like, yeah. And I feel like yeah. what I liked most about the show is that when I was watching it, I was thinking this is exactly 100 percent in every way what I would want from a Star Wars show if I knew nothing else. Mm. I, I – every – if 10 years ago you told me there would be an app called Disney Plus, I'd be like, I don't know what that is. Right. If you told me all this content is going to be I'm like, that sounds great, but I wouldn't know how much I wanted nostalgia yet because I was 20 and didn't mm-hmm. know. But if you told me at 20 that I would have a Star Wars show with a Mandalorian and it would be this great Western heist and it would play with time and play with world building, it couldn't have landed that more. Yeah. And it feels like reading a, a Star Wars comic or reading yes. one of the books that's yeah. over totally. here. And that's, a, a, yeah, that's for true. me, that's everything. So well, I was able to go like, this is that thing I didn't know I needed. Right. And it's weird to think about, imagine if we had this show now, but we hadn't had anything new Star Wars since the original trilogy. Oh, it would have broken the internet. Yeah, and I think it, the show would have been different. Ex- well, not only that, yeah. but but I also, I, and I'm wondering if the show would be better because of that, even because you don't have Maybe. all of this. the pressure. You know, exp- the pre- Exactly. The pressure or expectations that people put on on something like this, where it's like, what's the distribution of percentage totally. that we have to like yeah. give to nostalgia, whether it's like, or fan service. And but what's the percentage that we're putting into just making a good show, regardless yeah. of trying to please anyone? Well, right. We, we have this story. And so we're going to do it. It's a Mandalorian. That's what we're going to do. And they release it weeks before the episode nine. No right. pressure. Literally no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's that, what you I, know found, what I mean. Like, I find that very fascinating. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. Also, I, yeah. can, can we talk really quick about my favorite part of the show yes if, as long as it's not a spoiler it's not because he's in the he or she is in the trailer which is ig-11 oh yeah because ig-88 is the coolest <laughs> droid in the universe and i was very happy to see really that fun. that my, was my favorite my scene, favorite part personally. was verna herzog for sure oh yeah i mean he's yeah. pretty rad yeah. but but ig-11 shoots stuff and like <laughs> we got to see him do the laser thing yes. and that was really fun yes, for me that, i very much enjoyed that mm-hmm. that yeah. was amazing yeah and yeah. i was IG-11, all like being, yeah. like halfway through the show i was just like you know, being a dumb like nerd critic, mm-hmm. and then as soon as IG Eleven showed up, I was like, "Ooh, yeah. you guys, you know this is my guy." You know what's great about that is that IG Eighty Eight. I was never a huge fan. Mm-hmm. I didn't love the design when I was a kid. Uh-huh. I think I had a buddy who had the action figure. Everybody knows IG Eighty Eight is one of the bounty hunters in the sort of Boba Fett group, yeah. and they all look really cool. He's the coolest looking one. Super cool. There. But here's the deal: with nineteen eighty three. In 1980 technology, yeah. that robot could not move. Right. The action figure, you know, you're getting the Kenner movement, and right. I'm like, how effective can that be as a droid? Then I see IG uh, 11. 11, and I go, this dude can move. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. like with C- with CG adding oh, to his so movement. Beautiful. I go, that's a great design. Yeah. I love it. I get it now. So. And I love that it was like a 90s action scene set within a 70s western. I love exactly. that like, yeah. the robot yes. was Jason Bourne making yeah. moves. I know. And like I know that's 2000s, <laughs> but like that kind of. He's thing. like Neo. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just not. And then. It makes sense. Why yeah. would a droid need to look? It was right. just all of those things. Super and that, great. Oh, man, I love that. Yeah, no, I hope we get to see his flamethrower. When, I oh, mean, we if, will. Yeah. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, so any any other thoughts on our on our nerd show uh, the, what, that's blowing up the internet currently? There's another nerd show in Disney+, Plus, but I don't want a tangent yet. Oh, what is it, Koi? 
the world according to Jeff uh, Goldblum. Sure. I know. I, I, I I'm mean, very impressed that that was the one you went to uh, the first. The moment I turned on the app and I clicked on Jeff Goldblum's face. Did you yeah. love it? It, it? Okay, so I tried to be... I try to be an exclamation point as a person. Like right. I try to be. I, you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. So I think Jeff Goldblum is that with more panache. Uh-huh. Like he's got like an inherent sexiness that just yes. is unattainably describable. He's like, also just always so perfectly relaxed. He's, I want to achieve that amount of relaxation. He's like zen, but zealous. Mm-hmm. Like he's like zenless, and I want it. <laughs> so I love uh, Jeff Goldblum, and I was wondering if the show would get like cloying. Like if it would be too much Goldblum because yeah, yeah, I yeah. love well, when there's Bill no Murray. Such thing. Is there well, anybody else on the show? It's just oh, it's, him. It's walking around with him exploring things. That okay. He's, but I, the thing that makes him so fascinating is how much he's fascinated. Uh, you're interested because he's so interested, and I and I didn't know how long that would last. I learned nothing new about sneakers. It's a sneaker <laughs> episode. I literally, I, I could not tell you one new thing about sneakers. Right. And yet, for 30 or 40, however long it was, I was enraptured yeah. at how much he wanted to know that I gleaned nothing from. Mm-hmm. And it's a show that's even more about nothing than Seinfeld. Like, it, it's a <laughs> show. It's about Jeff Goldblum. It's about Jeff Goldblum, right. but it's not even about him. It's about him in the world. Yeah. It's like the Truman Show if it was real. <laughs> And I, but he like he knows. Yeah. Sounds so, like the, the perfect. But background you don't know show. the Truman Show isn't that, real. You we could, could be, be the in a simulation star right the, now. Exactly. There the, you go. And guys. the cameras are a great setup because I wouldn't even be alarmed by seeing them all the time. You've been brainwashing me for the last few years. It all makes sense. Yeah, Twitter exactly. is just to watch. But no, it's it's that, and uh, it's it's perfect for if you love that style of show. It's like comedians and cards getting coffee, but even more right. streamlined. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. I'm looking forward to it after yeah. I finish Gargoyles and Dark. Uh, right. You know, priority. Priority. that's my priority. Did Goldblum end up in a Rite Aid parking lot? Lot by any chance? <laughs> Not in the pilot, but there's more okay. time to come. There's because I swear that's my that's my Goldblum story is yeah. that he was like not near the front of the Rite Aid, like he was in the middle <laughs> of the parking lot, and he was doing the Goldblum. Uh, uh, I'm here. Uh, it's uh, parking uh, the. The lot, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and I drove by and I went, "You have got to be fucking kidding me!" Yeah, That's just like he's just standing there. Yeah. Like, ah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> parking people, people, That's people, really pa- good people. Uh, it was so uh, perfect. What is it? Yeah. What is it? People, uh, people, people, people uh, park uh, here. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, it looks uh, a very chaotic. Fascinating, event. fascinating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was like, I hope he made it yeah. to wherever it is. Maybe there was cameras. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it was like, but I'm like, I really, I think about it to this day. I, guess, why I didn't really you hope help Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum why got to where he needed to be. Why didn't you stop and say, can I help you, Mr. Goldblum? Oh, because then he would have been no. like, uh, I think, I, I think Serena, so. Yeah. Because I didn't Listen, know what to what do. do. Life finds a way. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Good He'll point, Hector. Fine. And with that, thank you, Hector, for that lovely segue. We're going to take a break uh, and we will come back and talk about more nerd news, more simulations <laughs> that we probably live in. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, at Koya is probably Mr. Truman uh, and we will take your call so to go take a bath- bathroom break you guys yeah oh, I gotta take a shit Alex Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific, see you there. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, 
Every week, we're gonna try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews, all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout oh, we the week update in the world these ads, of professional man. wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, Again, and talk about every little anymore. thing that happened on the Blue Brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops in on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it. All on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. And we're back uh, with Mr. Energizer Bunny and Hector. We need a nickname for you. Okay. What do we? What, what do you want to be called? <laughs> He's uh, like, I'm open to this. <laughs> let's let it be organic. Whatever you okay. want. By the end of the thing. Okay. You, uh, is this your last show? Are you coming no. back? No. Uh, you tell me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the one that was like, Canto Bites cool, and you were like, mm, <laughs> We'll see. Can huh? I call you that, Canto Bites? Sure. That's Ooh, fine. Jeez. It's not gonna no, stick. That's so sad because I stick, like though. you and I didn't I like Canto Bites. Uh -huh. So it's gonna okay. stick darkly. The internet Bye. is. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> that's so sad. Well, maybe if you call me that, maybe eventually you will begin to like the sequence on Canto Bite because you'll associate it with Hector every time you watch it. True. You'll go, very positive. Oh, Hector makes some good points. Uh, Whatever. This no, is dumb. I'm not going to think no? Hector makes okay, some good points. I'm going to think, oh, Hector is cool. <laughs> He's such a dummy. And he likes this dumb scene, <laughs> but it's, fi it's fine. That's so, fair. Yeah, I, and I that'll make say, me smile because I'll think of you. It really made sense in the context that you you bring up Canto Bite because I'm, I'm with a, a number of people. Yeah, it didn't mm -hmm. really work for me. But mm -hmm. I, I think that what you said about it being kind of Star Warsy and and how it it, it for the kids yeah. so to speak yeah. I think is right on the money yeah I do whatever guy we don't have to gang up on Doreen I, it's fine it's she's fine. right I I'm, just taking the middle right. Right. I'm the you know? toughest one in the room come That's on true. you guys are awesome but it's come true. on I can take all of you, <laughs> Why do you say, especially emotionally it also just, <laughs> maybe not physically it but. also just goes to prove that there is no new Star Wars content that we can watch without the last Jedi being uttered yeah I mean it just how long it do you think how long do you think that's gonna happen for like years and years thirty years Okay. 35 years. Or or until now we all fight about episode 9. I don't know. Let me ask you a question. When, uh, people, yeah. when people talk about The Phantom Menace, do people still say Jar Jar Binks? Mm -hmm. That's true. So like, I think it's sorry. Forever. Now, I think it's now forever. people like yeah. him. The, the fans have unfortunately decreed it so. So we're yeah, going to talk about that true. stupid guys, movie forever. Why do you yeah. think fans, uh, like saying something's for kids it, it, it takes it so offensively? Because I don't think we're implying that it's just for yeah, kids. Because I mentioned no. Sonic being geared towards 7 to 12 yeah. year olds on live. I mean on, on Movie Talk. Yeah. And like so many people were very upset that I implied because that the children's movie you, was made But for. also when I, when I brought up one of my favorite cartoons of all time earlier, Animaniacs. Right. It's yeah. technically for 
for kids, but oh, there's different. a lot so of smart. stuff. Go- it's so smart. Yeah. And because kids are smart. Like, yeah, that, I don't, I don't that, think that, it's that, an insult. I think people receive exactly. it as such. Like, I don't I think, think that uh, I saw this. I'm not going to take credit for it. Somebody posted it on Twitter recently, maybe in the last 24 hours. When you associate yourself so strongly with a fiction, mm-hmm. when you associate yourself so strongly with a brand, you could you 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 pose the the danger of any criticism towards that thing then mm-hmm. becomes a criticism of you as a person. That's the danger. So people literally take it personally well, because we don't they separate. As, yeah, they associate themselves so much with the thing. Yeah. Then when someone goes, oh yeah, that's great. That's for kids. They yeah. go, oh, I'm not a kid. Right. I'm gonna. I have to justify me in my 30s and my 40s. I'm liking the thing. So, and in order to justify it, I have to. I have to prove why it is mature. It's. Like, but no, it's you also don't. funny that people are like, "I'm not a kid." I'm like, "We're all still children. Nobody's an adult." So yeah. I don't know why heart, people are man. so. And that's what Star <laughs> Wars young, does. And for me. Young and dumb in mind. There so. it is. Fine. <laughs> all of that in the above. Star yep. Wars does that for me. Yep. It always will. It always will remind yep. me yeah, of my children. Exactly. So it, it's like whenever there is even bad Star Wars, critically yeah. whatever, right. it's good for me. It works either. Yeah. There's something in the Phantom Menace. There's yeah. something in Attack of the Clones. There's something in Last Jet. Everything you can that find I can something. take and go. That's some good Star Wars. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's and that's how it. I feel about any franchise. And I am guilty of this because I used to be like the angry nerd all the time. Yeah. Like like I, I've said this before when they announced Batfleck. Sure. I literally I put that gif of the guy throwing his computer through the oh, screen. No. And I th- th- did how Ben many... Affleck see that comment? And that's what he talked about yes, on the Tonight Show. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. a bummer. Yeah. How we, many how many years ago that. was that? And then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, he was pretty good. Yeah, he's great. So, well, that's so Ben Affleck's badass as Batman. Yes. And yeah. so that's, that was the last time that I remember being angry at something. Yeah. First of all, c- criticizing something before I see it, which yeah. is very dumb. And, mm-hmm. and we, are, we have all been guilty of. Yep. And number two, just being like, I have Michael Keaton Batman. I have Christian Bale Batman. Like, yeah. There's so many different things in, these, in all of these different franchises that have, that have been expanded. They have so much content that you can you can actually take something from each of those that you like. Even if you don't like the whole movie, even if you don't like the whole TV show, there's something that you can think about. That was cool. Yeah. And that's how I see things now mm-hmm. instead what, of ripping it apart. What I think is interesting with what you're speaking to with the, the fans seeing it as a personal affront yeah. is the whole way media works is that the suspension of disbelief has to be at a certain level. Like horror movies work mm-hmm. because you actually feel like you're running up the stairs like a dumbass. Like right. they actually work because your, your, your palms are sweaty. You don't acknowledge their palms being sweaty. So I, I do think you becoming a part of the fandom is yeah. the double-edged sword. But I'm wondering if as we evolve and as media becomes so much more prevalent, if there's going to be a breaking point where we literally lose the ability to separate what our opinions are and what the opinions of those we admire are. Yeah, or, dude, it's already happened. Of, yeah. It's already happened. Well, it happens it on Twitter every day, say. though. Yeah. Like, because, yeah. I mean, that's how Twitter works, is people are, oh, what's trending? Mm-hmm. I'm going to tweet this because I, I think I'm going to get all of these retweets. Even if it's not my like wholehearted opinion, I know that some people are going to agree on this. And that's and that's what people want. And I think that what you brought up, Hector, comes from, or Hector, because I want to call you Hector. Gracias. Um, I think that comes from uh, people's not just our expectations, but if if we if we don't like what we like, we don't even have our own opinions. Is my point. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes mm-hmm. we just we just think this is what I should be thinking, and fu- and we're basically like sheep. Yeah. And yeah. when we yeah. criticize something, we're like, hey, yeah. oh, like that's that's it's so weird to me that people need to see uh, film critic mm-hmm. and seeing what and let me read what they think, mm-hmm. and then I already have this uh, right. preconceived notion of like what I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a movie that I haven't seen, but this critic said I liked it or not. Mm. Right. And so I've, I've already decided whether I'm going to like something or not. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. That I is think. prejudice. That is prejudging. That's yeah. literally what that is. It's but bad. it's affected <laughs> by everything you're seeing on Twitter yeah. or on, on the Internet. Oh, it's like, and yeah. that formulates your Some, opinion instead of having your own opinion. I think individuals have definitely hit that point you're talking about, yeah. Coy, where they can't differentiate between reality and fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it happened when like. Second Life or, or or what was the other one? EverQuest Online or World of Warcraft launch and people right. got really sucked into that. And you could even point to stuff in the 80s. There would be some Dungeons and Dragons groups that were really tight knit and hardcore. And some people could tell you that when they played in the 80s or 90s or whatever, that they would then talk to their friend like, remember when we went to that place? Wait a minute. That, oh, that didn't happen. Oh, crazy, man. Because it, you could become so much a part of yeah. your experience. Well, it's still of hours thing. of your life. So that's it's what I was trying to say about D&D and a, those things. It's a shared experience. Yeah. You could meet a stranger on the street that you don't have anything in common with and then go, hey, do you love Star Wars? And then you have so much in common. Like, it's, and a, that's, it's a that's shared comics, experience. And that's how we know each other. I mean, you're right. reading the same things for 20 years is so how you get to a I, point. I think that it's already happened with many, many, many individuals, young people especially, with, with being inundated with so much content. But I think that 
the conversations that are sort of surrounding fandom right now are, I think, kind of better and healthier than the conversations surrounding fandom like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that I think as a whole, you, you kind of see a wave of people kind of recognizing some iffy yeah, stuff and right. going, let's try to not do that. Right. Let's try to enjoy and be positive mm-hmm. and, and criticize things constructively. And, you know, let's try to not harass actors and let's try to not, you know what I mean? And, well, yeah. and you can see people think, making movements for that. Do you think that uh, as we evolve as a species in general, like I think film criticism in general has changed too. Big mm-hmm. time. And it should change, Big right? Time. Because yeah. uh, did you guys see Paul Feig's tweet? Mm-mm. About uh, last Christmas, I think Rolling oh, Stone. Oh, nice. yeah, he yeah. was. He's the yeah. nicest I think man. Rolling Stone tweeted, uh, you know, a, a funny headline, basically shitting on his movie. This like, is saying, terrible. It's, yeah, it's like the one, our one star review, and then he said, "Oh, you know, we made this with a lot of love, and and uh, hopefully that one star is a really big star." Yeah. You know? <laughs> Which you're yeah. like, oh, you can't yep. not like that guy. That's that guy's very awesome. sweet. I know. But yeah, but that that would pro- that might change our perspectives too, right? Like if as like I. I yeah. myself have already changed the way I review movies because sure. I feel like I'm not I don't want to give somebody my review. I can just be like I liked it for this reason mm-hmm. and I can look at the positives, right? Mm-hmm. And and not just the negatives. I only yeah. talk about movies I like. If yes. I didn't like a movie, you won't see me talk about it. And I won't and if there's stuff I liked in the movie, you'll hear me talk about those things, but I don't like giving scores unless it's a positive score. I don't yeah. like giving reviews unless I liked more than most yeah. of it. Like I'm kind of with you on that. Cuz it's just and I don't like to yeah. like disparage someone else's art. At the end of the day, I've never made a movie. So right. any movie I've ever Ever seen in my life is more than I have done. Yes. So at the yeah. end of the yes. day, I might have read more comics than someone else, probably. But I haven't made a movie, so I don't feel like I'm in a position yeah. of judging it from that well. Like correct. And also, you can't speak for somebody else's experience. I right? get, when, we, any, we all have yes. different experiences to as creator. to like how how you're feeling in that moment when you saw the movie. You saw mm-hmm. like there's different experiences when you see something. Any so. of my reviews of art. Uh, positive or negative, all I ever do is try to talk about it from a personal experience. Where yeah. I say, personally, this is this is why I felt this way. I had no choice but to feel this right. way. I walked in, sat down in a movie theater, and watched a movie, and this is what I was thinking because I'm bringing my baggage, which is my personal life experience. Mm-hmm. And if it, even if it's something that is where I will disagree with, uh, uh, like the uh, the take on a piece of in a piece of art, or I might think that it was um, that other things could have happened in a different way or whatever. Like uh, trying to say if it's like a negative review, right. positive reviews. I agree with what you guys are saying. Share that in the world. That's great. Even but even if somebody comes up to me, and go Hector, what do you think about this thing? And I know yeah. that I didn't love it. I will at least I'll never be dismissive. I hate being dismissive. Mm-hmm. I hate, years ago I hated the thought of being like, oh that sucks. Yeah. Oh, that thing that thing sucked. No, it's And we've all we all used to yeah, do it, right? Absolutely. We, we're so, like, this is well, shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean social yeah. media in yes. a nutshell, right? right. I mean, yes. it's just like you like something Character and then, limit sucked. Right. And yeah. and you get and that's that's the one thing I never like when it comes to this discourse online, which yeah. is like you're wrong for your opinion. Yeah. Right? And it's like, no no no. I am I'll, not. Yeah. Yeah. You can talk to me, talk to me with respect, talk to me with like, you know what, I disagree, here's mm-hmm. why. Mm-hmm. And but it's just this discourse that's continuing to happen and get yeah. worse and worse and worse is what I, I take great offense with. Right. Well, and it's what you guys were talking about earlier, too, that um, it's this weird ownership that I think we've all... Yeah, the uh, ownership of, of any brand, any Exactly, any, where it's like, IP. oh, this is my movie or this is my I own these characters I'm like no you don't yep. mm-hmm. and that's the thing that I've yeah. that I've learned to live with right I, I used to ha- like hate the prequels I still don't like them mm-hmm. but I'm I don't I'm not like you know trying to convince people that they're wrong no for Does liking them so much better like I love yes. liking everything it's the thing I get the most crap for but like my <laughs> life just feels so much lighter and better than most probably is yeah. and like yeah. the worst part of my you life can is tell. <laughs> well yeah the worst part of my life is seeing other people sad about not liking the things I liked like the worst part yeah. is me just seeing yeah. them suffer I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, because I, I feel bad because somebody that's writing, no, you're wrong. You're such an idiot for not liking the same movie I like. I'm like, well, I wonder what's so wrong with that person's life that they're so sad about. And I yeah. hate that I still read YouTube comments, but I know that those people are just suffering through so much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look away. Marianne, yeah, look I need away. to. I need look to. Away. <laughs> Maybe 2020 is the year I finally get healthy. I, I don't do it. I can't. My no, mental I health is I, do, but... I love reading YouTube comments. They're I... my favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're so, because they're just funny. That, yeah. They're fucking you funny. Roxy said, us that one. In your oh heart. yeah, somebody called me a fake goth, which I thought was great. Because then I'm like, you're right. I should go back to sucking real blood. Yeah. <laughs> I really messed you that have one really up. Really watered down your goth, yeah, Darina. My comic book shopping episode of Damon Lindelof. The amount of people that were like, the amount of people that made the exact same joke of like, you should have sold him Watchmen because he's clearly never read it. And I'm like, guys, if you're gonna be dumb, scroll. Like at least read <laughs> other people yeah. making your joke. I know. I, I just also, like, it's, like, dude gets it. Dude gets Watch Watchmen. Like, they, <laughs> why did they make Watchmen political? 
right. because it was oh. <laughs> when we read it. Yeah. Like, it just, yeah. just, just well, yeah, that's why we all kind of liked it. Yeah, I think, I right? Yeah. yeah, you know. But anyway, but anyway, news. So news. news, Riley. What are we talking about? All right, we got an exclusive. Let's start with this here because we have some uh, some uh, comic book sweaties in the room with us. Oh boy! An exclusive from our own Jeff Snyder here at Collider. Up and coming actress Jamie Lawson, who recently graduated from Juilliard. Mm, she has smart. landed a notable role alongside Robert Pattinson in the Batman. We don't know what that notable role is, but I think everybody might have some ideas. Um, what What if she since she's from Juilliard? What if she's a singer and the Batman is a musical? I would be so into that. <laughs> All right. Yes. Darina? I think you're on to something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we don't know exactly what it is that she's going to be, um, the, the part she's going to play, but uh, yeah. We what have... do you guys think? This movie has, has been, uh, just from the little that I've heard about it, has been heading down the path of the most comic book accurate adaptation of Batman in a movie. Ooh. I think Matt Reeves... Say more. I think Matt Reeves <laughs> really loves and gets the comic bookiness of mm-hmm. Batman, and mm-hmm. I love the Christopher Nolan movies, and I think the Christopher Nolan movies were an attempt to, to distance, to be like, this will, this will, you know... This uh, is a realistic exceed. Batman. This will, this will transcend mm-hmm. the genre, whereas Matt Reeves is like, but I like Clayface, and I like Killer Croc, <laughs> right. and I like Poison Ivy, mm-hmm. and I like Mr. Freeze, and I like these really outlandish comic book concepts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of those is the Bat Family, and I think um, you know he knows what he's got with an incredible Commissioner Gordon, mm-hmm. uh, yes. uh, who is uh, played by Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wright, Wright, who's black. If you didn't know, mm. and I think um, what and I black think Commissioner that, Gordon. Wait a minute. And I, I loved the 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 teases to that in the Christopher Nolan. Do you movies. think she's Barbara? Absolutely. Oh yeah. That's what everyone thinks. One hundred percent. Let me tell you why. Because when you do that Batman like timeline, when you do that Batman like you crunch the numbers and you go, all right, this dude is thirty. Minimum, maybe mm. 25, maybe 35 before he's like Batman. At what point does Robin enter the picture? And mm. remember, he's got to be Nightwing at some point. Like, you know, he, he's got to be a kid, but not a child. Right, exactly. So you're like, is he 12? Is he 15? Mm-hmm. Is he 16? And then yeah. he adopts him as his ward. So then a couple years later, when he's like 19, he's like, Bruce, I'm done. I'm going to be Nightwing. Then you've got Batgirl, Barbara Gordon in the mix, and she has to be Batgirl for ye- all these characters are these characters for years. And right. then she becomes Oracle. Oracle. Yeah. And then you've got like Cassandra Cain, Batgirl. And then you've got, you know, uh, 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 Oh my God! Jason Todd Robin Tim, goes into Tim Drake Robin. All yeah. of that sort of like Batman math of like and the, the <laughs> whole time, years that would take. The I think whole it's time, actually Bat math. The Bat the math of yes. Bruce Wayne is Batman this whole time. And that, like, that, like those kids have retire. to die or move on. Seriously, all of this stuff happens. That I I loved the tease in the Dark Knight trilogy where um uh what's his name who played Gordon uh oh my God Gary Oldman Gary Oldman he had a family and and it was like cool is that his kid? and we're looking in the house we're like oh my God is that was one of those kids yeah. going to be Batman the kid from Game of like, Thrones is like but it was like this. <laughs> He had like a son, and then he had like maybe an infant daughter, and you're thinking, man, it's gonna take 15 years before <laughs> yeah. she can put on a cowl. Like, what's right. this math, Christopher Nolan? What right. are you doing? Because well, he didn't care; he was never gonna do that. Right. And I and, and I think that that really quick. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I think the Nolan movies were more so just uh, a diff- a completely different. Uh, type of Batman that we've seen, right? Which is cool because sometimes comic books don't translate, uh, it's okay if they don't translate directly to film. You gotta know what to leave on the page. Right, we've seen Mm -hmm. some superhero movies where you do see these beautiful, uh, almost uh, scenes where they do do look like comic books, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But uh, but the cool thing, sometimes I just really love seeing somebody's different adaptation about a universe that I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. But it is cool that we're coming back to that now. Just to say, I think this actress, her age, her look, her, her, her age especially being like early years of college possibly or late years of high school is the perfect age to introduce okay now Batman's going to start becoming active because then to Barbara Gordon a couple months into that goes wait 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 well, maybe I can and then you have the right. beginnings of that Matt Reeves coming off of the Apes movies I think knows so how to do the balance of very serious great drama mixed with the ridiculousness and outlandishness of the Apes franchise, mm-hmm. yeah. and he really knew how to play with that. So I think he's going to be able That's to do gift. that with, with uh, you know, you got to turn your head and cough when you're th- when you're handling those that franchises, when you're handling the mythology, the ridiculousness. You I think mind the Robins. Reeves, really I think, I think, I think the Robins makes the gift of that. There it is. And you'll yeah. be able to have your, you know, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Matt Reeves has what is needed. <laughs> what one of my favorite things about Batman <laughs> that. is that since he's the eye line for so much of the DC universe. He's us. He's Mm -hmm. the most human. He's the character that is righting the wrongs. And he's also kind of like 
He's making choices we all think we'd make. He's making all the decisions that we want to think we'd do in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So one of the strengths, I think, of the character is that the director has such a stronger voice Mm -hmm. because his voice is your voice as opposed to, like, Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man has extraordinary abilities. Even though he's the underdog of the MCU, he's still... I'll never know what it's like to climb a wall, unfortunately. Of course. But I can imagine what it's like to have a billion dollars and punch, like, a homeless... uh, uh, Not homeless. uh, A a home... Sometimes homeless. Sometimes homeless. (laughs) But, like, a home... uh, just a burglar. There's the word. Yeah. Home invader. Uh, yeah. Like I, I can imagine that scenario easier. So I think a director like Chris Nolan, like to me, those Dark Knight movies are Christopher Nolan's Batman. Mm-hmm. Yes. And to me, Zack Snyder's Batman. And yes. and and those really Batman. tie right. in more than a lot of superheroes. So I'm really excited that the cast of this, I can have all of the assumptions I want, mm-hmm. but I have no idea what Matt Reeves' comic experience is like. Kind of like what we were just talking about. Yeah. You're so in the world, you assume it's yours, yeah. but Matt Reeves, I only know I've loved all of his movies. Mm-hmm. I only know that I could not be more excited for Colin Farrell as Penguin. Mm-hmm. And oh, I know, yeah. I know that... Like, and Paul Dano's Riddler. I'm in, dying to see that. In Bruges... The, oh yes, Colin Farrell's eyebrows should have won an Academy Award in Bruges. <laughs> Just his eyebrows. <laughs> Which, by the way, somebody corrected me because I also called it in Bruges, but but it's actually how do you say it properly? Do you guys know? In Bruges. In Bruges. Mm. Yes. Oh. Is that real? Is yes. for reals? It is in Bruges. Okay, because so they say it in the movie. It that way. They do going say in Bruges. Wow. Yeah. Well, no, I just read stuff in Spanish. I was like, oh, in Bruges. Right? But, in Bruges. But, but in Bruges. In Bruges. In, in that film set in, in Belgium. Okay. Guys, the eyebrows. Stop. I'm messing with you. That's not it's how you say Bruges. it. It's definitely Bruges. Goddamn, my doctor, you so got me. Dude, I was going. I, oh. couldn't. I, I, I figured you were. I, was like, I just wanted to no. lean into it. Oh, in Bruges. God damn it. No, sorry, good one. Sorry. Good one. I think as much You're welcome back on the show. In Bruges. As much fun as it is to imagine these characters, even when we find out if she is Batgirl or Batwoman or not, I think it's really going to be really interesting to see what a Bruges brand new Batman is, what a brand new, especially since it's so recent we had one, and this is definitely a different take. Mm -hmm. I think Pattinson's fantastic. I've I've been excited for Pattinson. We've talked about it every time I see you. But I I definitely, uh, this is the most anticipated comic book movie for me coming from a place of total blindness. Right. Because it's such a different take. It could be almost anything, and the amount of villains would have terrified me at any point until now. Right. And it's also bizarre to think about, you know, uh, Batman was my favorite as a kid, but we've seen so many different iterations of him that I'm like, oh, like we're getting another Batman movie. Like when this was first announced, I was like, oh, okay, I guess. Like at least Matt Reeves is cool, you know. I like his stuff, but every casting choice has only gotten me more and more excited for this. Like I'm yeah. actually, this is it's now becoming like my new Joker and, and superhero like uh, anticipation that I have for all these movies. So and Juilliard, that's so cool. I, I love that it's an unknown that is clearly talented, and I love when these movies have the ability to cast. Your Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, Robert Pattinson, and yeah. then they give someone a chance to be a titan. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, this, yeah. this girl is coming out of Juilliard, clearly talented, and now she gets to be a movie star from the jump. That's pretty cool. Good for her. To yeah. Get. Yeah. Yeah. So what else we got, Ryan? I don't know. Do you want to still keep talking about this Martin Scorsese marble no. shit? No, can I, I don't. Can I say something? No. Do it's, you, it's, can I, mean, I say something? I mean, about I it? just yes. No. Cody, okay. it, that soundbite yeah. is exactly how I feel. It's like, Thank you, Cody. Well, we went a whole total of three days without hearing about freaking Martin Scorsese yeah. again. That's only because it was the weekend. You know what my thoughts are on this? What? It's that gif of Tommy Lee Jones and the Fugitive. Where he's like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> That's what I think about this. But even that character, Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive, cares more about Richard Kimball killing his wife, yay or nay, Correct. than I care about this. So I Correct. can't even use that. That's not even accurate. Because <laughs> I really don't care at all. You could show me a video of Martin Scorsese crapping on a stack of Blu-rays <laughs> of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'd be like, well... Still my favorite franchise. That's his. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I still enjoy all of your work and all the work yes. you just shit on. And that's and your that's, right. Yeah. Because he can so shit dumb. on wherever he wants. He does. And, and anyone can, but especially Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese can shit anywhere he wants. And I'm also, I agree I'm with also this. so excited. With, like, I'm also so exhausted. See, now the tired kicking in. I'm so exhausted about people. I got my coffee. Yeah. Uh, people asking people that are doing their it. own work Don't. what they think. Like, if I'm promoting a film, I'm proud of it. I put a year or five yeah. of my life into it. The last thing I want is for you not to right? not ask about my work. Ask about the opinion of someone else's work about work I also didn't do. Yeah, it is right. ridiculous. Well, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about it. That, yeah, that, well, no, Kevin Feige sure, finally yeah. chimed in. Sure. And uh What did he on. say? He disagrees. Yeah. Do you want Great. It? Do you want, yeah. No. He said it's we unfortunate. Don't want, are we moving think, on, Cody? I think that's not true. I think it's unfortunate. I think myself and everyone who works on the movies loves cinema, loves movies, loves sure. going to the movies, yada, yada, yada. We did Civil War. We had our two most popular characters get into a very serious theological and physical altercation. We killed half of our characters at the end of the movie in, in Avengers Infinity War. I think it's fun for us to take our success and use it to take risks. 
and going to different places. And there's an even bigger <laughs> quote down here, but you get the gist. Okay. I think it's um, so he's defending them. I, right. He's defending it, and, and you know, Ken yeah. Feige, you defend it. Well, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Cody. Thank Thank you. Talk about <laughs> Yes. All right, we honored hey, he's Martin spoken. Scorsese. We honored him by saying it. Now we can move on. Yes, we what talked you about guys, it. You hey, guys. let me let me throw this at, uh, out at you because I haven't gotten your take on this. This James Dean coming back from the dead oh, being God. in a movie. You guys hate uh, it too, right? Bad idea, yeah. Okay, good. It's Very amongst ugly. the worst ideas. Yes, Thank okay, you. good. Ugly Roxy, I am absolutely Roxy's like pissed off right now. She doesn't know this. why. <laughs> it's and despicable. It's 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 not only disrespectful to filmmaking, it's disrespectful to James Dean, and it's disrespectful to every single actor alive. Then so, how did you feel about Tarkin? Uh, and that Rogue was One. that was a character that could only be played by him. That's different. Like right. that, okay, that, no, that's what I'm curious. That, yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's what's an homage. The that okay. is love. That's 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 acknowledging something that's irreplaceable. That's acknowledging a character that is so important and mm-hmm. irreplaceable. Yeah, this isn't like James a Dean's career. Rebel without a cause, too. Right. Okay. Right. And, it's, it's, and, it, and it's also James Dean. He's such a figure and he's such an icon. Yeah. And I don't want his. I don't want his IMDb to have an asterisk. I don't okay. want this movie to have an asterisk. I don't want a hundred actors that auditioned for it to be like, I guess I wasn't good enough to be not a corpse. Like it's just, it's all gross. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just, it's just the biggest thing is that it's so unnecessary, right? Yeah. Like, like just uh, if you're gonna do something like that, honor, you know, and you're gonna and you want to honor a bunch of uh, dead celebrities that way, yeah. then make it a special. Like do do something where you're celebrating their lives. Like th- that mm-hmm. person, whoever plays James Dean in a hologram or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. CG they use. That's not James Dean. Right. It's not the. I like the Tupac hologram. Because it was doing a thing that honored Tupac. And I don't like all the details of it. And I don't right. like if, if 100% of the money went to uh, the Shakur Foundation or right. went to one of the causes he believed in. Because right. he, he was so charitable and so philanthropic. And I, words are gone. But all the things Tupac did, that's one thing. But this isn't going to benefit James Dean. It's not yeah. going to benefit anything he did. It's using his name yeah. and sullying it. Yeah. It's, it's gross. It's like really just, it's like worse than like bad fan art. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when I read to you, uh, finding Jack Director is surprising. At the backlash yeah. over this, <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, yeah, for <laughs> casting funny. dead James Dean, I said immediately, "It's like because one of the original quotes was, we searched far and wide and no. realized that the the it's like, did you search far and wide? No. Because no. a dead guy got the job that." Many yeah. actors out there could probably be right for because yep. you know here we are. So here's this That's quote, so which. I can't with this. Naturally, there was a huge backlash. Star Wars um, er- Ernst was apparently caught off guard. He told THR, we don't really understand it. We never intended this for it to be a marketing gimmick. What else is it? Yeah, what else not- is Like, this is literally how you're getting people to watch your movie. That's all. Right. Like, nobody's going to care about the movie right. otherwise. Yeah, James what? Dean's not in the movie, and you're going to call it James Dean Blank. Like, it's literally just a. It's also, gross. how would he be credited in the movie? Like, what, what, what would James it say? James Dean with an asterisk. Spe- yeah. Special appearance. Is that literally by what James it would be? I don't know. I think that they are literally going to say it's James Dean, which is. Starring James Dean? That's which a, is absolutely they wrong. They should say starring zombie James Dean. I it's can't. Like in fact, they should have zombie James Dean, and I've then never, I would watch it. They didn't put Tupac on the billing. Like they, I'm going back to the Pac thing because that's as close as I can get yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. the one version I found kind of acceptable. Because you well, know, because it's, it's a also uh, and it's also at a live concert right. where it's just like a one in a million. Thing. You know, you're never going to see that one again. Off. And right. the voice or like you, or you is get Tupac it on YouTube because yeah. it's a song, right? And like it's not like James Dean recorded. Li- if James Dean had recorded lines for a movie and they wanted to edit that into something else, like they've done a hundred times. Correct, before. yeah. Add That's a body different. double from a different right. thing. So it's like you kind of preserve the performance that he did make. Yeah. Yeah, that's not here. That's, this, this is like is he opposite. didn't get to do it. So you're going to put somebody, in, uh, an actor or just a, a body double or whatever it is, you're going to face swap or do the, the, the deep mm. fake, whatever it may be. Ernst, the producer here, told uh, continue telling THR, we will take every precaution to ensure his legacy as one of the most <laughs> epic film stars to date is kept firmly intact. The family views this <laughs> as his, the family views this as his fourth movie, a movie he oh, never got to make. Uh, we do not intend to let his fi- his fans down. <laughs> this is my Scorsese moment. Did you just this get is muted? What, I got muted. Could, this Cody is muted, what you'll hear Mark. me yelling about for the next six months if this happens. Thank this you, is my Cody. Scorsese stance. It's despicable. It's gross. Don't do it. His fourth yeah. movie. Oh, uh, mm, no. Sorry. No, I'm it's not his fourth movie. Bad idea. It. It's not his fourth movie. It's gross. So moving on, so because we all agree. Mm. Uh, we're actually, uh, Cody, can we open up the f- phone lines? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. He's like anything but anything, like anything but this. And we're only going to take Scorsese questions. I'm kidding. <laughs> 
Please, no Scorsese please, questions. Please, please. No. You ask about anything you want. You want to talk uh, nerd stuff. You want to talk simulations. Like, feel free to uh, let us know when somebody's like, on the line. Cody, please. Somebody's going to be like, hey, it's me. I'm the director of Finding Jack. Uh, just listen to you guys. Great. And, uh, <laughs> Let's talk. Let's talk. What? <laughs> why? Please Ouch. help us understand anything. I, I would you like know to what? have a conversation with him. I would, too. I would ask, why Why do you feel yeah. the need to do this? That's just money. It's just, it's, it's money. it is. And, yeah. well, when they say it's, it wasn't a marketing gimmick. James Franco's played James Dean. Uh, the yeah. the the great kid from Chronicle played James Dean. Uh, people can Dane play. DeHaan. What's his Dane name? Han. He's so good. You can honor this He was my favorite person. part of Spider Man too. That's um, we got to talk off air. Or not too Amazing Spider Man. It was too Amazing right? Spider Man too. Yeah. I give it that to Emma Stone. Yeah, yeah. she was Their great too. Was was the only. But merit. I, I, liked I liked him as. Uh, Harry, Harry Osborne, Osborne. not just, when you turn into uh, the yeah, actual I'm Green just Goblin. Over but Harry Osborne. I'm just over Harry. But he's a good actor, so I liked his portrayal. Sure, sure, sure. sure. That's what yeah. I meant. Yeah. Just but the character, I was like, mm, mm, mm. I, I think just, we gotta get what, to that. Like we gotta if, earn it. It's gotta be like Spider Man yeah. five or seven. Yeah. Like you gotta yeah. get there. I have yep. a question for you guys. If yeah. you could make if you could make a movie out of any comic book character, mm. which one would you pick? Like what are you dying to see that you haven't seen? Oh, great question. So something that hasn't been hasn't been done yet. I mean, or if you want to reboot it, right? If it's, gotcha, if it's, gotcha, okay, gotcha. If it's Can I make one. a sequel? Sure. To Man of Steel 2! <laughs> Yay! Oh, Mark re- wins. There you go. Mark wins again. Another Superman film, yeah. What would? Well, who would be the villain? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hector's no, like, thank real. you for your... Seriously. Uh, I, I did a Riley Roundtable with uh, Jason Inman, and we thought Bizarro for Man of Steel okay. 2. Interesting. Did because if get, you play yeah. off the themes of Man of Steel... Is it also Luther? And Luther because, as well, because Bizarro has to be cloned at this point. Are right? you going to? Are you make? You're not making it from Bizarro world. He's got to be just like a like yeah. a degenerating clone. And and if okay. I remember correctly, it's like to play on the themes that Man of Steel did, which is yeah. like he wasn't Superman. Right. He let all the buildings fall down and yeah. hurt people in this. And that just as the world is getting back to to trust this man, here comes Evil Bizarro. Superman. Evil I love Superman it. comes. It's a great call. And then it it it, right. it it causes everybody to question. And you know, Clark Kent is like, th- well, that's not actually me but the you know being in the world of social media and the media would be like be no great. that is him right, right. and you can play those themes out within it and then it sets up the third movie which would be entitled Last Son and it's Brainiac as a villain I was gonna say I thought you were gonna say Brainiac at first because no, that, we that would be that. my I like, pick I like okay. that trajectory yeah, I thought that was, that, that, that's really smart yeah. what about you Koi? I don't think we've ever gotten an X-Men movie so I'd like one of Ooh, those okay. snap. Uh, oh, shots fired shots fired, shots fired. Uh, but, damn you hear that Brian Singer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey! Read a comic book, yeah. Brian. <laughs> He's busy on some gym, Whatever. some children. Um, Do you guys not that, like uh, any of the X Men movies? No, I think they're good mutant movies. They're not X Men movies. But yeah, but, but which to... one? Like you, you here's, have one that you love that you first rewatch. Class? Uh, here's, here's X Men First Class is the closest to being an X Men movie, but it's so sullied by Brian Singer. I, like I, the, okay. mm. This is what Coy is describing. What the about thing, Logan? The thing you described, Logan is amazing. Yeah. And we have yeah. to say that before John Rucka busts in here like the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's so <laughs> good. To bust through this thing like, I fucking like, love oh, it. Oh, yeah. oh, no. no Nobody yeah. says Logan oh, when he busts no. in. Logan! <laughs> Here's the deal Logan, oh, no. Logan is amazing. Logan makes me cry. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. Mm. Every one of the movies done by Fox. Uh, maybe with the exception of the Deadpool's, but I even then, they're... but even then, the Deadpool's are pretty spot on. Like you described earlier, whether you like Batman or love him or dislike him, you can pull something from each Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're totally right. But, but what you also described is we're all compromising mm-hmm. as fans. No one particular project nails it wholly, right. 100%. Right. So you're pulling this from this and this from this. Well, I like this Bruce Wayne and I like this Batman and I like this. All of the X-Men movies are movies first mm-hmm. before they are adaptations of the source material. Mm-hmm. And not just with things like costumes and powers and characters, but I mean like themes, like thematically. Yeah. They're not about any. Thing. Right. They're about the same group of superpowered characters that have superpowers and, and yeah. but, I, about but, so I much. Di- but I disagree yes. on on at least the Charles Eric relationship. I think that, that was my favorite part facet. of the, of Listen, the movies, and, yes. and it's my, it's why especially, I love the X Men comics so especially much. Especially McAvoy up. Fassbender. Yes, th- are, that, they're th- fantastic. Their 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 acting is. It's perfect. The best part of Fast, but I yes. want Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. I want Correct. the story that I want right. the Correct. nuance as like the acting is incredible and what they brought to it was incredible. They never got the writing or the length of it, with seven movies. They somehow never got the length of mm-hmm. exposure mm-hmm. to make the X Men movies. And I and I don't think going about it by having the team already assembled and all these things is the way to do it. I think they should right. start young. I yeah. think they should actually have a school. I think and you could easily make this a twenty movie franchise or a very expensive show. Uh, I'd love to see it in the big screen. Cause I'm a big screen guy, the, but the, the proof is is that Fast 
Banner was in each one of those X-Men movies. Mm -hmm. Mm. And Magneto as a character is very vital to the X-Men mythos. But like they were thinking about, well, how do we bring back Fassbender versus what's the story dictate? What yeah. does the story need? If this story is Apocalypse, let's focus on N. Sabanor. Let's focus on Oscar Isaac's right. character. But they were like, well, how do we bring in Eric? We have to bring, because it's fast. That was my favorite part of Apocalypse, How do we bring in Jennifer Lawrence? Though. She's so great. But they're, bring they're more Steve. worried about their elements than they are about the comic elements or the story elements that matter to the comic elements that get you to caring mm-hmm. about Magneto. It rested on fast right. being incredible, which he is. Yes. So but that was my joke answer. But in reality, since we already have two great Deadpool or one half great yeah. Deadpools, I think uh, having an X-Force movie be separate from canon mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. give us the team movie that is action based that does already have established characters that does do all that and then have your X-Men be a separate continuity I personally I don't think Deadpool as he stands would fit with the X-Men as I do them so I wouldn't mind having an X-Force movie be your action team up like a Joe Carnahan style like very intense and then have the X-Men in like four or five years be a not Harry Potter but be young and grow into them like I don't want a super young X-Men but I I don't think Deadpool is the right what, yeah. Why um, is it tonally that you don't think Deadpool feel, fits? X Force allows for all the benefits of an X Men movie with the Deadpool stamp, with okay. the violence, the R rated, the actual killing, without them making the X Men feel like they're sullying the name of the X Men. Don't kill. They they represent. They they defend a world that hates and fears them. Right. The whole beauty of Deadpool is that he doesn't know right. what he stands for. He's the for. complete opposite. He's his of own them. thing. Yeah. So if you introduce X Men through them, your Deadpool is going to sully them, much like Brian Singer did. Right. And I don't want Deadpool. Or, to become the Brian Singer of the or it could make for an interesting uh, sequel, right? Where they meet there and like, and that's that, that would be a fascinating uh, uh, story. Yeah. To to have the anti-hero trying to convince the the mutants that are and that was the Colossus fun, but I think yeah. X Force is cake and eating it too because you can make a John Wick movie with Deadpool, which they kind of right. did, but with yeah. Team, and then X Men should be. I, X-Men should lean on the themes of today because, I, in my opinion, in 2019, X-Men are arguably never as important tonally as they've been since the 60s. Agreed. Yeah, Everything we're dealing agree. with is the X-Men. Let the yes. youth lead the way. If I'm going DC, I'm going to go Booster Gold. Ooh. Time traveler, comedic Ooh, character. That. That's what something that the DC universe needs in film level. Mm. Um, with maybe a close second would be Plastic Man starring Ben Schwartz. Oh, I that's perfect. That. Yep. Oh, Ben Schwartz oh, would be perfect that. for if that. If I'm going Marvel, I would do a Nova movie starring yeah. Sam Alexander. I love Michael Who's Pena and Ant Man. Sam Alexander is a character in Marvel Comics who is half Mexican, half white. Okay. And he lives in Arizona. And he learns that his father, who he thought was a deadbeat dad and mm-hmm. ran off, was actually a member of the Nova Corps Ooh. and is like on a prison. Like in in the space, mm-hmm. and so some members of the Guardians of the Galaxy come down and tell this teenage kid, mm-hmm. "Hey, your dad is actually not a deadbeat dad. Like he's part of the Nova Corps, and he left you this helmet. So then he finds his helmet, puts on the helmet, and then becomes superpower. Becomes a you know goes out into space and fights with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Joins the Nova right. Corps, has cool space adventures. Oh, I like this. So that I is a that. cool teen perspective of the space world that we haven't seen in the MCU yet, coupled with. Love Michael Pena in the Ant Man movies, but up to this point, he's the most prominent like Latino character yes. in the movies outside of actors. Because Zoe Saldana is great, but she's a she's Gamora, mm-hmm. and Tessa Thompson's great, but she's an Asgardian. Mm-hmm. So this character could be, oh no, I'm a Mexican hero, yeah, and the lead, and not like the supporting like character. Like a Miles Morales a, type. Correct, yeah, correct, yeah, correct. And, right. and that's something that's that, cool. that the MCU could do before. Yeah, I mean, they they it's in their hands, and they will they should do it because okay. you know we're getting Miss Marvel and She Hulk and everybody else. Cool. Yeah. Do you oh, think that's Why don't they consult us nerds when they come up with these? Because oftentimes we're wrong. Yeah, that's true. Most of the time we have we have bad ideas. It's the being too tied to the source material thing. If they go to literally the people that are just doing that, it's probably dangerous to be like, "But you changed the." Yeah. And I uh, then you get too nerdy about it. uh, Live chat. I think they should have a team of young X Men, but also have OGs. I think that the school should be a fairly established school. Mm. I I think uh, Jim Lee era uh, for the OG age. And or just do the like literally the all new X Men bring not the time travel but bring in giant size X Men and have right. it be the five OGs meet the new team and it expands. But I, like that. I think uh, I think having them already established a little bit not origin origins. Okay. Right. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, we would like to take some calls. Cody, anyone on the line? Oh, there we go. You're on Collider Live. Welcome to Nerd Talk. Who are you? Hi, uh, um, I'm Wesley from Los Angeles. Hey there. Hi, you're here. How's it um, going? Good. Um, I've been really enjoying the show so far. I'm glad that you guys were able to make it your own. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. That's Appreciate really sweet. Appreciate that. So I, I had a question for, for Hector. When are they going to add that organization thing to the watch list, man? Uh, no kidding, dude. Uh, <laughs> thank you Disney for your Plus, call. 
Great question. Disney Plus. Uh, I'm such a um, OCD yeah. person that I started adding things to my watch list, my queue on Disney Plus. I added The Mandalorian first and then some shows and then this and that. Mm-hmm. And then I go to my watch list and I'm like, okay, let me just move these around in alphabetical order. Wait, I can't. Oh, That's driving yeah, yeah. me bonkers. <laughs> which is also that on Disney Plus. That was a great show too. Mad. Bonkers was a great show. But that, <laughs> yes! but like it's straight because I'm like, well, I want to organize this somewhat. Like I want to put the, the sort of Disney afternoon shows together and I want to, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to put Mandalorian over an S with Star Wars and I want to yeah. put the Marvel things in Marvel. So you and, can't catalog no, the dude. things the way you nope. want? Nope. It's just floating. It's chaos. <gasps> chaos. Well, there's, I mean, there's bugs. You yeah, know, this thing that didn't, sure. didn't work for me for yeah. to however many hours. I mean, I'm sure that hopefully for you and yeah, uh, that it, sure they'll fix it. They'll fix. Well, hopefully. that's one of the yeah, uh, few uh, many things I have in common with the Joker, which is chaos. I, that's <laughs> like I don't like chaos. That's the one thing. Oh, yeah. There you go. So I'm OCD too. Oh, okay, so, great. Yeah, yeah. Be a billion dollars by next week. I think like by this weekend it'll be a billion dollars. Well, but we'll never know because oh that movie. I thought yeah, you were talking about movie. Disney Plus. Oh like, yeah, we'll never Plus. know. We'll never what know. numbers? They won't tell How us. Many views? Yeah. Who, who knows? Who cares? Which by the way, I saw it again last night. I was telling Hector about mm-hmm. it because I know you weren't a, as big of a fan as I was, sure. and I'm still obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it even more. So there you go. They got my money. More, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> giving them all the billions. <laughs> you're the reason it's going to hit now. When it comes out, one billion. Are you getting Blu-ray? Are you just going to wait for HBO Max? where it will be their launch day. I am trying to really continue my physical media cool. uh, Thank you. collection Thank because you. there's movies out there like I'm getting worried about all the Fox stuff like I like yeah. my I need to there's make sure I, yep. like I know. all the I need to go get the stuff, aliens like, and predators and yeah, Fight I'm Club I'm worried and about that so. It's like the movies that they're going to get like that are the like Fight Club yeah. Yeah. is one of those mm-hmm. that, that I really worry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus if the Blu-ray, you can't have that Blu-ray. Four audio commentaries. I'll take four separate all of ones, them. And all of them are incredible watches. There's I'm not sure a dry right. commentary on yeah. the list. And Agreed. even uh, Avatar, which is on Disney+, Plus, somebody found and they pointed out, they're like, wait, they have an audio track for Avatar on Disney+, Plus that is like removed some swears so it's like a family-friendly <gasps> audio track, no, and I'm like, this no. is like this is like watching a movie on a plane. <laughs> yeah, that's that drives me insane. Come on, you're like being that ridiculous. That's if, that's ridiculous. If, if, it yeah. is ridiculous, but again, if you're the consumer and you're that upset and you have a right to be about that thing, go buy Avatar on DVD or Blu-ray. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like exactly. that, you've got to make that choice. Right. You mm-hmm. have to put in that little data at Target where they go, boop, boop. Oh, we sold another Avatar exactly. Blu-ray. That's weird. We're selling a little bit more. Yeah. To put something out there, yeah, man. Yeah, but don't so. make somebody change content just to, to please you because no. uh, because the content was made for a reason Foolish. the way it is. So yeah. I anyway. say vote with your wallet, so buy things yes. like, that you want to support. Um, and We got another call, Cody? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're on Collider Live. How are you? Who are you? Doing good. This is Cam from Mississippi. Hey, Cam. Hey, Cam. A couple of things. One, in order to encourage Coley continuing to be a human exclamation point, can we please get a soundbite from Metal Gear Solid for the alert (laughs) notification every time he pops up? That's really funny. Yes! I I, I love that because I could just see his face and that sound going together and it works. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I have a cardboard box, I can sneak under as yeah. well. <laughs> the exclamation point yeah. will be for the three of us when we get caught off guard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Boy starts going on. Yeah. We're like, Bring! Oh, yeah. yeah. How did he I'll make this about mushrooms yeah. again? Or, yeah. Hey! Oh. Hey! Oh, that feels so right. <laughs> That's so warm and fuzzy. That's. I think we need a soundbite for all of us. That's great. Like, like Trick's director over here telling us about how to say in Bruges properly. <laughs> in, it's in Bruges. In Bruges. Definitely in a Star Wars sound effect. And uh-huh. what a, what a goth sound like as an uh-huh. exclamation! Oh, oh, that's right. You need a you need a, a, an element. Thundercrack. And, uh, just a, just metal, probably. Yeah. I respect yeah. it. Yeah. Thank exactly. you very much. Uh, I'm looking up at just voice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, God. God, I am an exclamation. God's when I've name done is it. God. God's name is Cam. Apparently. God lives in Mississippi. Uh, God lives in Mississippi. <laughs> we got another call, Cody. Not right now, Derek. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Back oh, there. there we, we go. Uh, you're on Collider Live. Who are you? How are you? Holy shit. <laughs> hey. Hello, uh, yes, holy I, shit. I agree. Hi, this is uh, Anthony from Queens. Hey, hey Anthony. Anthony. What's up, Anthony? You got uh, a nothing, question nothing. for us? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, first off, I want to thank all you guys, because yesterday I had a uh, surgery, and I listened to you guys before I went in, and you guys totally relaxed me, because I was really, really nervous. Aww. Aww. Well, Dude, I, that I, means I, the world to hear. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm glad everything went well. How you feeling? Oh, it went well, you know, having a little uh, blow the waist trouble, and now it's all better. Okay. Good for Good. you. Great. I'm glad it went well. Uh, do you have a question for us? Uh, yeah. Earlier you guys were talking about, you know, uh, the Batman and Robert Pattinson and everything. And I remember when they first cast him, 
I was really trepidatious about it because I didn't like him as an actor because of the whole Twilight thing. But then Harlock was talking about, you know, Good Time and how mm-hmm. I should watch that because yeah. the performance is really good. So I watched it and I was totally amazed. I just went like a 180 on Robert Pattinson and I watched all his post-Twilight movies and I really dug them. Yes. So I was wondering, like, have you guys ever, like, had an actor who you didn't really like their performances in movies and you didn't think that they were, like, you know, as as good as they could be, but then you saw one performance and then you did, like, a total 180 on them? It's a fantastic question. Great uh, question. Great question. I, thank I, you so much. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. I kind of felt like that a little bit for Scarlett Johansson. Mm. I thought that she was fine, fine actress. I thought that she was unfortunately typecast in a lot of roles that are like, she's a beautiful young woman. She's hot. She's a sexy young. So a lot of world, and even with like Iron Man 2, I was like, it's not a great introduction to the mm-hmm. character. You know, this is kind of a tricky, like she's changing in the backseat of a can car. I, can and, I do something? Really yeah, what, do you, what is it? I'm just like thank you. your nerd. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I had something on my face. Goth nerd team. Um, <laughs> but, on my face. But then I watched uh, Spike Jones Her. And I really yes. appreciated how it was such a stripped down performance because visually you do not see her. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's literally yeah. the performance in the voice. And I thought that she did a phenomenal job. Yes. And kind of since then, I've been like, she's really, really good. Mm-hmm. She knows what she's doing. So that's one that I sort of, you know, changed my opinion on, which is cool. That's, I'm so glad you brought that up because I felt the exact same way. And mm-hmm. I love her. I think it's one of the most underrated sci-fi movies we've gotten in recent times. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful movie. Uh, I love the way L.A. looks. It's the story. It just, you, you, you basically believe that he's in love with this character you know it, it's really fantastic and and it's it's really her voice yes. that that helps other than yes. Joaquin's performance right mm-hmm. um so yeah I don't know what about you guys I'm trying to think of uh the... I Matthew McConaughey I always wanted to like and I mm. love Days to Confuse and I love his early work but he did so many rom-coms that I just yeah. not not only I like rom-coms but I knew he was better than his performances. It just felt like it was me something getting through. So I, I, I kind of like loved and then lost. So then this right. reconnaissance when, when, <laughs> you know, Lincoln Lawyer came out, and when like yeah, when Wolf of Wall True Street, detective. there's there was this like five year span where it felt like I re fell in love and like validated. Yeah. So and I think, you're like, all right, all right. I was yeah. like, all right, all right. You get it. All right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, for me, for, ah, <laughs> God, I love this. Uh, so for me, it was McConaughey uh, version two. <laughs> okay. What about you, Mark? I, you know, it keeps coming ahead. Stay in the Batman universe. Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. Yep. When he was cast as Batman, Same a lot here. of people were, you know, there yeah. it is. And uh, he's turned into one of my favorites. There's a universe. Because he's just awesome. There's a universe where if all of the sort of stars aligned and everything was kind of different, where Ben Affleck would have been playing Batman for 11 years, like Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man. Yeah. I 100%. guarantee it. I, 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 I'm a little bummed that yes, it's not happening. He, he, could have, he could have inhabited that role to the, to the level that Robert Downey did, and if those projects had been as well-received and successful as the Iron Man early, you know, and into yeah. the MCU and beyond, we could have had a movie, you know, in, in 2027 where Batman sacrifices himself fighting Darkseid Along all the, yeah. you know what I mean, and it would have been Affleck, and we all would have been crying. Would have been like, yeah, I, saw, yeah. I completely uh, agree I, with I, that, I'm, Hector. I'm and with, it's yeah. and it's funny because, I, like I said earlier, I was not into the casting at all, sure. and then I saw it, and it's whatever you think of him as Batman. To me, he's the best uh, physical fighter Batman that we've had. Like the yeah. way, he, like those those scenes in, in BVS, like <sighs> he looks like a badass. Like His he looks training, like that, I pictured that, that, that it warehouse in the scene comic is, book, reading it as a poetry. kid. Yes, yes. I just I like how big he looked in the suit. Yeah, the dude was big. Just in the Bruce Wayne suit, where I was dude, like, that's that's a big boy. Yeah, where he's just in the elevator, like going to talk to Alfred. I'm and like, that felt like that's Bruce how Wayne, Batman like, That guy is trying yeah. to hide yeah. under a suit, which is what that character yeah. is. Yeah. And his training montage is one of my favorite superhero scenes. Like him in the chain. Yeah, the chains. It's so yeah. silly. It's also <laughs> it's how Batman would train. He'd train with practical yeah. things. Yes. He wouldn't just be on a bench. He'd use a bench, but also yeah. chains and practical. Mm-hmm. He'd want to work on his lats and his traps so he could yes. swing better. Yes, mm-hmm. agreed. Totally. We're getting really yeah. nerdy here, you guys. I but, love it. Um, I guess my answer would be surprising to many, which is Leonardo DiCaprio. No, that's fair. <laughs> it's really weird. Another but sort of rom com y kind yeah. of a well, you not, know, <laughs> heartthrob. <laughs> the it's a heartthrob. Well, it's not, it Girl wasn't that so much. It was exactly. It was more so it's like he's always been a good actor, but I've always seen him ask you know DiCaprio in every mm-hmm. movie mm-hmm. I couldn't mm-hmm. I, I was like that's the actor right I, I would yeah. never like focus on the character until I saw Django 
Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. Yep. This, he's, he's incredible. He's incredible in that. And then it happened again in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where he completely, like, I forgot yeah. I was watching him. Yeah, he was great. Have you retroactively enjoyed his work more? Have you seen yes. any of the stuff you didn't like? Uh, yes, uh, especially with movies like The Aviator, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like, yeah. like or Catch Me If You Can, yeah. you know, but but these, like, uh, more recent performances of his have been Can really I, crazy. Let me throw something out there. I rewatched the first Iron Man with some friends last night. Mm. Still holds up. It's great, but we're talking about the whole MCU, and we spent the whole time kind of fan casting certain characters that haven't shown up in the new Marvel movies. And my buddy Mark David Christensen, he he turns to us and he goes, "How about this?" He goes, "This is crazy." Leonardo DiCaprio, Norman Osborn. Ooh. Ooh. And I was like, "Yeah, hello." Yes. I was like, "But yes. then you bring back Dane DeHaan as no, Harry. No, you cannot bring him back. <laughs> I know he's no. so mad no, about no. Harry. They do look <laughs> just alike, so that's funny. <laughs> but like, literally, Dane DeHaan is young Leo yes. in my brain. I'm like, oh yes. wait, no, no. But DiCaprio would crush oh, that. Yes, he incredible. Would. I've always had Tom Hanks for that. For Norman yeah. Osborne? No. To, what? No. Tom no, Hanks is Tom Uncle Hanks Ben. Tom Hanks isn't no, no, a no, villain? No, that's the beauty of oh, it. Norman oh, Osborne. Norman Osborne leads a oh, giant multinational oh, company, is elected <laughs> president. He's yes. got to be likable like, to your face. But he's too likable. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah. When he betrays you, when you find out Green Goblin is Norman Osborne, it's got to feel like a betrayal. Here's if there's no betrayal, it doesn't work. Cody wants to take another car, right, Cody? I don't know why I don't buy... Tom Hanks physically as the supervillain, the Green Goblin riding around on a glider, but I'll somehow will buy Leonardo DiCaprio, who's like very soft and very well fed and very happy, and like, very comfortable well in Malibu, fed. running yeah. around with a water Nerf gun. Like, like, yeah, I'm like that guy. He could get ripped. He no, can he throw cannot. a goblin. No, he cannot throw a goblin. Whatever. Though. If Michael Keaton can fly around, then Leonardo DiCaprio. Michael I don't Keaton know. can do everything, though. He can. Yes. Anyways, Cody, do we have another call? There it is. Oh, you're on Collider Live. How are you? Who are you? Hi, this is Stephanie from Ohio. Hey, hey Stephanie. Stephanie. How's it going? Somewhere Roxy is screaming the V word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I never get in when Roxy's here. I know, right? <laughs> She'll be uh, back Thursday. Sorry. This is Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're not in the same place. Just, just the, vo- the voice is very deep. Hello? Um, <laughs> do you think, sorry, do you think um, Netflix IPs are strong enough to keep them afloat? Or do you think Netflix? with the whole streaming wars will have to sell eventually. Oh, interesting question. That's a good question. Thank you, Stephanie. I mean, what do they you guys think? Yeah, they don't have their own, uh, I mean, their their licensed properties anymore with like Daredevil and Jessica Jones and everybody's gone now. So we have what, Stranger Things but and is she talking about, Ozark. Right. And, yeah. yeah what? I think there's room in the market now that we have so many, you know, streaming wars. Yes, it's happening, but I will continue to watch Ozark. If they continue to put out quality storytelling mm-hmm. i'm going to watch it i think it'll be fine i mean i think we're we're talking a lot about how you know the internet just broke because a new star wars tv show came out right. yeah. so it's I'm, interesting i mean out of all the original content that we gotten from netflix what's your guys' favorite that you that you want to keep getting immersed oh, in that world shit it's probably glow and i'm really glad okay. they're getting the fourth and final season I, glow really really impressed me but i also just the it's just the dork in me i really do enjoy stranger things every mm-hmm. season i know some people are like yeah. should have been only one season i'm like i like them yeah, it's, i'm with you it's nostalgia done right because it's remixed and new enough that it's not just, hey, look, we're doing this movie. Hey, look, we're doing this movie. There's right. little things here and there where I'm like, ah, okay, I see what you're doing. But um, I, I, I think this is a fantastic question. I think it's so, so good. And I was thinking about it just now. I honestly don't know if I can answer only because I don't know what the ratings are on all of these things, man. These companies are not releasing the, the right. ratings, the views, the clicks. So I don't know how well Ozarks versus, you know, Stranger Things mm-hmm. versus like their their old content, like reruns of Friends or Star Trek The Next Generation do right. on Netflix. I don't know what is keeping them afloat. I don't know how well the man, I don't know how many millions of people saw The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I do. Or live how in many the, millions I, couldn't watch it. Yeah. I, li- <laughs> I Look, I live in the L.A., you know, entertainment, uh, people who talk about entertainment bubble. So I can never have a good grasp on like what the normal, you know, how's everything performed? around the world to regular people. I don't know, because every one of my friends, and myself included, we're on it. We're on the new thing, so I can't even... You know, I don't know. I feel like Netflix is going to become a different animal post Disney Plus. Yeah. I feel like the price is going to get a little lower, and I think they're going to keep making original content. But I think they're going to focus more on bolder content because I love Disney. But at the end of the day, Disney's making very safe choices because mm-hmm. they can. They have mm-hmm. so right. much right. infrastructure. Right. Yep. They have so much content. I think because of that, and I think this is a great thing. It's the anti-monopoly because of this zeitgeist shift. It's going to turn into Netflix making bolder choices, giving more creatives more creative freedom, making bigger things. Love Death and Robot shouldn't exist. Right. Ozark shouldn't 
didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Stranger Things isn't it shouldn't be as good as it is. Glow and and like the Glow. Said, yeah. and my favorite show on it is Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee. Mm-hmm. I, I watch Netflix for uh, documentaries and for uh, comedian specials. Is I like that comedy. produced by Netflix? Uh, it was Crackle and then Netflix bought it. And okay. Now it's a higher production value and they I produce see. it. But I like content like Comedians and Cars or uh, like most stand up specials. On the street. Billion. The, uh, none yeah. of that would exist on Disney. Right. So I think they can cohabitate. But I do think that Netflix is going to drop their price at some point yeah. to compete. And I do think that I hope that means more comedy out of Netflix. I hope it becomes like what Comedy Central was before it completely sold right. out. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, because everything is cyclical, right? And and depending on what's going on in the world as to like what type of art we get. Do you guys think that Netflix could go back to even just, again, even producing physical media, right? Like I'm thinking like that they far. They still do, technically. I mean, do they, can you, you can still, still do DVDs that? From Netflix. Really? You can. Yes, I, I have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I use it oh, oh, all the really? time. Okay. I do well, Netflix I DVD through that. the mail. It is dope. <laughs> really? <laughs> because everything that's not, every movie or TV show that's not streaming on Netflix mm-hmm. if it came out on DVD mm-hmm. you put it in your queue and it'll be here in a couple days right. and I have so much content that I'm not like I'm not rushing to be like but I gotta see Men in Black 2 now mm-hmm. I'm like <laughs> and by the way that's even streaming so then I watched it but then they sent me Men in Black 3 in the mail and they're gonna send me Men in Black International which I haven't seen yet on a DVD and I, it's fine I can take my time with it oh, it's cool. a great investment I need it because I have a movie podcast some of those movies are hard to get mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the movie will come in and be like okay Koi we're watching you know <laughs> yeah. Lethal Weapon 1 or whatever right. not yes. that I didn't already have that on I Blu-ray mean, of course. I, I was did. gonna say I did. I that should be on your I collection did. regardless I have that on VHS DVD I know. A-Track and, and you're wearing uh, a shirt underneath your shirt that I is know. Lethal Weapon what, I know. About, what about Beta <laughs> not, not A-Track what's the one the, 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 the video laser disc. yeah laser disc. I don't even have a laser disc player I had to no. Yeah. But I think Netflix is in the most uh, right. precarious shape mm-hmm. because they don't have HBO's back library. They don't have Amazon's it's a shipping company. Right. They don't have any of those things. So I think Netflix is going to have to change their infrastructure mm-hmm. more than Amazon or maybe HBO or any of those things. And there's, and there's all those smaller shows that I love like uh, Sex Education. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys have seen it, right? But that's the yeah. type of content that I'm looking for that's completely different from any of the franchise content that we're, that we're used to. So if they focus on that, they could continue succeeding. Um, I won't find Bill Burr on Disney Plus. So no. I know. I'm going to be a Netflix guy. Correct. Isn't that so crazy? We um, all have Netflix, and we all watch the craziest, different yeah. stuff. Yeah, none of us probably have the this same is, recommends. This is, this is why I can't have this conversation about, like, oh, is NBC or CBS in trouble to Netflix and streaming stuff because it is so individualized mm-hmm. yeah. that anytime somebody asks me my, my opinion about stuff, I'm like, well, I know what I use my Netflix for, right. and it's different than what literally everybody yep. else uses for. I, so I can't, you know, until they put out the <laughs> ratings of, like, our highest rated thing is reruns of The Office. We and need the office. Do you guys when we have, lose the office, it'll hurt. Like yeah. then I won't know. Do you guys have other apps that you use, uh, like uh, Shutter, for example? Like Let's I love list Shutter. them. Here's what I got: Disney Plus, Netflix. I don't have it currently, but I am going to get back into CBS All Access from okay. a Trek. Got to have my Star Trek. Gotta they're going to have Picard. They're going to have Picard. They're going to season yeah. three of Discovery and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. But there was a couple months where there was no Trek, so I was like, I can I can stop paying for this, and it's fine. Um, I count it, but it's not movies, but I have Marvel Unlimited, mm-hmm. which is just their comics on, on the website. That's right. awesome. Um, and then I you? share or benefit from people in my life, loved ones that have Amazon Prime, Hulu, um, and HBO. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, I don't pay for those. This is it. That's all I got. Okay. What do and I I'm like, fine. Netflix, Disney Plus, share Hulu, mm-hmm. have Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. So you pay for Amazon uh, Prime. I pay for Amazon Prime. Yeah. I don't have HBO Max, but I plan to when I can afford it. It's 15 bucks a month. Okay. I just, I, I got okay. it. It is a lot I gotta of money. I got to get off the you internet. You got to wait yeah. for Watchmen to finish season one, then you binge it. So uh, you well, pay 15 I've, got, bucks. I've got the first six from Damon, so I, I'm I'm in a very unique position. Wow. So I've seen the first six. Wow. I know from more your than buddy anyone. Damon. Uh, well, no, Haley Fouch came in at, uh, oh, last God. week. I there was just is. about to say Thank it. You, Thank you, Cody. I was Cody. waiting for it. I might have seen two-thirds of the season the first week it came out. Oh, good for you. But HBO is something I want to get. It's just that okay. price points out of my range, mm-hmm. uh, and I actually I weirdly use Crackle. Uh, yeah. decently so how often. do you guys have all these apps but not Shutter? What Shutter? I'm not uh. as big of a horror person as you are. Oh, okay. that's why. I, I, like so I you're said, like a fake goth too. <laughs> yes. And if I need to get a horror movie that's only available on Shutter, I have a buddy who has ah, it. But if okay. I need to get a horror movie, get that Netflix through the mail, yeah. baby. They'll send me the disc, that's true. the DVD. That's a good point. It's all you get that disc it. and Spotify. I forgot about Spotify. Oh, I Spotify, Spotify is literally the best Spotify. investment. Yeah, mm-hmm. Every month is the one thing that I actually like giving money to. I definitely know. I love Spotify. This is an iPod. It's the best. All of my music is on this iPod. But what about I don't new have music? a stream. Then I go and download it and put it on here. But how I don't much have room to stream. Have? I don't need an internet connection. A lot of room. 
Yeah. I have but that's most... not enough music. Oh, yeah, I, it's I have fine. Six different you can only listen to one song at a time. <laughs> so Challenge I'm good. Accepted, Hector you don't know how I, I just live. listen you to don't know how I live. Enter, you don't know how I live. <laughs> yeah. I listen to music all the time. Sure. Like when I'm driving, when I I don't, it, it's all the time. And, yeah. like, and new God. music. Spotify yeah. is great. I stopped but listening to music so long ago. Are, I just do. I just do podcasts. Podcasts. Yeah. I listen to podcasts all the time. I go to a concert every two weeks. I know. Stay sane. Why don't I? I listen to, I listen to, do you want to go to Jaden on Friday? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Podcast. Okay, Classical here. music, jazz, and movie scores movie is scores. what I what yeah. I listen to when I work. Yes, that's yeah. good. I've made my entire life genre entertainment, so if I made music, like I can't do music, I need one thing in my life that I'm consuming that isn't something I put out. Like okay. I read com- mm. I, I read comics all the time because I talk comics. Yeah. I watch movies. I talk movies. I, I so I feel like music is my one like this is just peace. Yeah. And music is just to me. It's I love all these different art forms. I will go to museums and look at paintings and sculptures. I obviously love film and TV, but music to me is the one thing that I can't uh, explain because yeah. it's uh, because it's audio, right? right. And so like that's it's, but it's see, that incredible, but it's incredible. Are you kind of a control freak? Yeah, that's I think why. so. So it yeah. stresses me out about how you can have Spotify, you can have music, you guys can go to concerts, you guys can listen to the radio, right. hear a new song, enjoy it, and go, oh, what a great three minutes, and then it leaves, and you might not go, who was that? Where is this? What album is this? When did this come out? What is this attached to? Is this on a movie score? Is this on a movie soundtrack? Yeah. Where did this come from? Meanwhile, I'm organizing everything. Yeah. Yeah, no. So I have to organize, and I know if I'm getting one score from a Marvel movie, I'm like, I'm going to get them all. Like, right. so, so it's like a, it's like a systemic sort of control thing, and that's what I listen to. Or if there's a band that I love, I'm like, cool, I'm going to do that thing where I'm going to do the deep dive and get like all of their albums up to this point and do that kind of organization. Yeah. But finding and, new stuff, I, I yeah. find that like artists yeah. you may like is so important to my whole yes, list. Yes, and also it, it's the best discovery tool right. out there that I found like music But I can't have something, I can't take on more stuff. I That's where that. I'm at. I can't <laughs> have somebody like, be like, I'm with you. You, you want to hear this new band? You want to hear this new band? I've got like, bands. No. I've got bands. Yeah. I know no. my bands. Stop it. Yeah. I don't because then I'm going to, who is it? Great. I love them. I need to get them all. You literally have a container for music on purpose. Yeah, exactly. Like a Tupperware is closed. That's right. That's Fascinating. Right. Ect- I'm at my limit. Okay, Hector. See, this is why I love getting you guys on these shows because <laughs> I'm, I'm we a, never I'm get to know psychopath. you. I'm so well, sorry. But that, so I think that's all the time we have today, guys, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, I want to thank Koi, Hector, Mark Riley, Alex and Cody in the booth. You guys, I'm Darina. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be back with some more nerd talk tomorrow, more simulation talk, more alien talk. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>